Howdy folks, welcome to Adventures in Alderaan, our 5th edition D&D campaign. I'm Joe Treffer, Dungeon Master, and joining me, I have Matt, Dan, Hannah, and Alana. Tina, unfortunately, is not joining us today. Um, she is off doing other things, but Tina, we hope you're having fun. A couple of announcements before we get started. First of all, uh, Mosaic Team 5, every night, Dan. Mosaic Team 5. <laughs> I was turning it right off, and then the but then Twitch you stream was you like, do it, oh, and you do it every single week. It's, it's so funny. Um, Mosaic Team 5 is our Starfinder campaign. We played session 17 last night. It was a doozy. <laughs> It was somebody's birthday and there were cocktails. So if you want to see that, which you probably do, uh, YouTube is going to be replayed at noon on Sunday, uh, followed by the replay of this session at 4 p.m. Uh, also on Sunday. Additionally, uh, we have albronrpg.com is our website. There are links to all the old sessions. There's also a write-up, which includes the last time that the group visited Ortude in this, uh, on this four-year-old map that we have that I hauled out. It looks awful. I like hate looking at it because it's like so... I would have done everything different now. These just thinking are about pretty perspective like... and stuff. Those are the, the ribs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I could just put on combat cameras. So yeah, actually see part of it. Oh, I see. Oh, I wasn't. Yeah. So, um, anyways, party time. Yeah, over. I think there it's is great. a write up for all four years of this session of this uh, campaign. It's definitely uh, a hefty read, but we do do recaps before every session. So if you miss something, not the end of the world. Additionally, I think the last uh, um, announcement that I have for digital sound effects and things like sirens. For digital sound effects and things of that nature, just as Matt alluded to, Sirenscape is a digital tool set that you can use to play music sound effects and throw your friends off, which I'm thinking about doing. But with that, that is all the announcements that I have. We can get into our recap. You're only thinking about it, right? There's a lot of chaotic energy tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's gonna be wild. I feel like it's like left over. It's like an entity that lingers. It's in weird your energy. Eye. It's the weird. It's the weird poltergeist of absinthe. Yeah. Happy yeah. belated birthday. Happy <laughs> birthday. Oh gosh. Okay. I think it's also probably the dehydration. Partially dehydration for sure. Yeah. What are you throwing your trash in there for? Is it yours? <laughs> no, they're not. You gave me them yesterday. Fate oh, I changers. I did not. Boys. Last we played, <laughs> you left the walled city of Nocturne behind in your flying ship, the uh, Winds of Change, and eventually made your way across the Idlewild, a beautiful flowering field. Though Shay, looking from behind, you guys are so distracting, um, this motherfucker. managed to spot a little bit of a commotion as you passed. Aka, Oakfield, Eleanor, <laughs> As you argued over the morality of Oakfeld serving others tea brewed from the leaves of his body, <laughs> Shay spotted three young adventurers who had fallen into a little bit of a, a scrape over their ability a, level. A kerfuffle. A kerfuffle, if you, if you will. After hesitating for a moment, several of you lowered yourselves down using winged boots, uh, Shay just jumping off a flying ship. You intervened and managed to help these few, although Brenna, your tide of chaos came back to haunt the party. As this area tinged with the magic from the wild, uh, ripped open in sort of a, a window to another area, and forth stepped the everlasting ones, three-headed giant, roaring uh, Oakfeld. In your massive tree form, you threw a monster at this other monster. Managing to buy enough time. What the fuck? Damn. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Clearly, you didn't. Damn. Why do you have a 90s yeah. office also, phone yeah. as your <laughs> ringtone? I turned it off. No, you didn't, dude. Look, it says it right there. No, because you just made me hit it. Yeah, we can, we, can, uh, we can go over how to use your phone. Right? Oh, sorry. I didn't hear the thing that I just saw. What? I turned it off. All right. You didn't. Sorry about the <laughs> it, of it, If it wrong, that <laughs> probably means you didn't turn it off. I'm gonna go ahead and connect the A to B dots there. But all of you, uh, especially with you, Oakfeld, throwing this monster at this other monster, and Akka, with you casting the Vortex Warp spell, very effective. Specifically not casting. Sorry. <laughs> Using my action to invoke the spell via my rules lawyering, <laughs> your Vortex Warp, you managed to get everybody to safety, which is great. <laughs> Eleanor, you kept the ship steady, staying back a good distance, still feeling the effects of the battle you had been in, your health never fully recovering. But after dropping these young adventurers, many of whom were fans of Shay from the original Finger Gang, 
off somewhere else in the idle wild you made your way out and over the short sea one moment here in the short sea the primary stopover between Sarantil and some of the other continents is a small island called Bis. You flew low on your way there to protect yourself, Eleanor. Um, the result of any kind of fall potentially being fatal in your weakened state. But you arrived, landing outside of Ortud's compound in this desert known as the Nothing. The orc druid of the sands greeted you all warmly. And as you, Oakfeld, told him that he was a sign, he turned and told you that it was you that was the sign, and gesture for you to follow. And that is where we begin. So, give me just one moment. I'm so glad I saved the sound set from four years ago. <laughs> <sighs> You right there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Very weird energy. <laughs> I need like three more seltzers. Yeah, I know, it's hot today. You gotta hydrate. I know. How do you tell him? So, Ortud is an old orc. You can see the skin leathery in the way that people who spend much time in the, in the sun tend to be. And you did <laughs> see all of him as he was bathing nude in this hot tub-like or thing. Or nude. Um, or two. You can see uh, this leathery skin leads up to an incredibly friendly face, but he gestures to you, especially Oakfeld. No, you are the sign, Oak. Come. And he gestures, begins to walk. Um, are you following him? Yes. Okay. For the rest of you, mm -hmm. uh, Shay probably is going to stay back with the ship just to guard it. You know, it makes a lot of sense. Brenna, you are still on the ship, sort of watching everybody else uh, get off, uh, confront this naked orc who now semi-clothed. What, what would you like to do? I'll go down and join them. This Excellent. dude seems worth hanging out with. Sure. <laughs> so, for the rest of you, are you following? Yeah. I'm a little wary of someone who's actively interested in Oakfeld as someone who's capable of anything. Yeah, fair enough. He is so, jealous. just kind of like, oh, okay, guess we're following this naked orc, dude. Are supposed to help? Or two walks on the side of this compound. And as those of you who have not been here before, look at it. Uh, there are stone walls. You see these large stones that have been shaped sandstone uh, by hand to form roughly symmetrical bricks. These form walls about four feet tall. There are massive petrified rib bones, larger than any creature any of you have encountered. And that includes you, Akka, with the white dragon. Um, a creature of this size, hard to kind of imagine. Yeah, would I have any idea, like, what kind of creature could even... Make a nature check. ...be of this size? Yeah, make a nature check. Strung from rib to rib, there are these long lines of rope, and hanging from them are paper lanterns. They're not currently lit. You would imagine, at night, this is a beautiful place. Within these ribs and the walls around them, there are all kinds of vegetables. You see squared, uh, pale melons, although many of them kind of beginning to rot as the season changes away from their seasonality. There is like a small patch of wheat. There are little um, raised garden beds where small plants grow. But as you walk around the edge here, Oakfeld, the first thing that you notice is a tall oak tree sprouting from the sand outside the compound. This looks old. It looks uh, close to your height when you were in your full treant form. Um, and the only other thing growing from the sand around it is a single white flower, magnolia. The magnolia seems somewhat wilted in the sand, struggling to survive. But he turns to you and he says, the oak guided you to me. So, he turns and looks at you. Magnolia, what's wrong? I, I got stabbed. <laughs> he looks up and down and says, you don't look so stabbed. Uh, uh, more accurately, I got stabbed with a dagger of darkness that seems to have permanently 
or at least semi-permanently destroyed something, or... Yeah. <laughs> I have Magic given stuff. her the elixir of the tea leaves in water. <clears throat> it was very strong. <laughs> it had done nothing to soothe her ailment. What troubles her? No tea will help, but I, I can help. That would be much appreciated. He turns and looks at you, Akka. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and you, do you need something regrown? Uh, gestures to your mechanical arm. Uh, you know, I've kind of learned to live with it. <laughs> So no. Metal would not be my choice, but to each his own. Yeah. Turns and looks at you. Better than I can help. Four. I got a twenty-three for the nature check. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> not that it really matters. I'm just curious what animal this is. You don't remember the name, but you've heard mention of these amongst the books and things that um, the Dungana Antiquities Collective has access to. If you've been to some of the libraries in uh, Dungannon, and you look in the right places, mm. these things are mentioned. But there were creatures that predated dragons, and now, being a, a little bit kind of tied in with the fate of the world, you're aware of the fact that every um, two, three thousand years, the star appears in the sky. And when it does, new forms of life emerge from these pillars around the planet. When dragons emerged, very few know what else came, mm -hmm. what they surpassed. But looking at this large creature, that tugs at something in your memory, something from the first stage. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, um, it's such an unknown thing, it'd be difficult to say. It's kind of like taking it in the awesome power of knowledge. <laughs> Books are cool. Yeah. Knowledge is power. <laughs> this is not hard to do if you know the right tricks. Are you ready? I suppose so. I haven't slept, but that matters. It does not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You can see he scoops down, he bends, he has to put his hand on his hip. He's like pretty old. Uh, the back cracks as he does, but he lifts up a handful of sand. He looks you over and he sees on your shoulder, sort of like the, the remnants, none of you have bathed for what it's worth also. <laughs> so the remnants of like dried caked blood from that wound. This will hurt, but that means it's working. You have like this flashback to Oakfeld saying very much the same thing. <laughs> but he takes the sand in his hands and he throws it, almost as if he is like pelting you with the sand. It hits you, it strikes you in the face a little bit. Magic. But where it goes, <laughs> <laughs> pocket sand. <laughs> and it actually, you have to shut your eyes against it. And as it gets in, you wait for it to sting. It almost feels like salt, but instead of that burn, what so replaces it is this almost numbness, this soothing sensation. And you feel it melt into your body, almost like how sunlight can warm you. And as it casts through, whatever darkness once rested within you, you feel it almost as if uh, shadows fleeing a rising sun. Out. There is a moment where there is this emptiness that is left there. And there is a sensation that whatever is leaving is not destroyed. You feel it leave, go somewhere else. And you would imagine whatever that belonged to, aware that you are now free and likely aware of where you are, for what it's worth. <laughs> where two puts his hand down, uh, just brushes your shoulders off yeah. roughly and just goes, it is not the neatest, but it works. I am very appreciative. Thank you. Uh, when Shay mentioned this place, this is not at all what I was imagining. But what were you imagining? Well, a desert and less an oasis. <laughs> if that makes any sense. She so referred to it as the nothing and fairness, so ah, this is that not is why I am here. It's not picturing. The green matron <laughs> said, or toot, go forth, go to the nothing and make something. Mm. He turns and looks at you, Oakfeld. Mm. And now, the matron speaks where she could not. 
You look for honor, Oakveld, yeah. I look... I look to be restored to what I once was. Nothing is the same. I am... sick and yearning for my home. This land that I walk upon, these plants do not talk to me and speak to me in the ways that once were familiar to me. Can you help me, Pickerly Pear? Well, we will not know until we ask. Come. And he hobbles off and begins to go back to the entrance of the compound. And I follow him. So, uh, should we wait here? He gets... <laughs> or... He turns and says, no, come, come. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> we will see, as he's walking, if the green matron has answers. And if you have questions, perhaps you may ask. Haka's like, why are you still fucking hating on me Every all the now time, and then, stupid tree lady? goes down, kind of like picks up a, like a specific <laughs> handful of sand. There's a point where you're about to walk through. He stops you out and goes, ah, goes down and picks up like this handful, all identical, like completely normal grain, <laughs> takes a few pieces out and then pockets the rest. But you continue to walk. He brings you over to this area that he had been bathing in. And you can see... Depending on your feelings on this, to some dismay, there are little like hoses almost of hollowed out vines that lead from this and serve as irrigation for the rest of the um, <laughs> um, stuff that is growing here. You, really you, a, a you. natural system. No uh, need but confused. <laughs> <laughs> to hope this all makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> that doesn't actually bother Aka as much as some of the other things. Like, it seems practical. He yeah. walks yeah. over to this tub of hot water. And from his hands, he pulls out these two uh, pocketfuls of sand. <laughs> he looks over and says, don't worry, this is not for you. Let us see if the green matron is listening. And he throws the sand across the water. It doesn't sink. Almost as if forming a flat surface, the sand and floats resting atop the water, and you see it begin to shift and move. Aka, for mm -hmm. you, you've seen something incredibly similar to this before. You would see Heinrich write these complex glyph glyphs into a book, and as he waited, the glyphs would disappear and reappear, formed into answers to questions. You recognize some form of commune. In this moment, Ortud's eyes glow green, suddenly bursting with this light. And Ortud says, although the voice slightly more ethereal, she wishes to help. Do you have questions, Oak? Friends? He stands back. You can see the hands held up, elements of the sand begin to drift up, and there are several grands that float above the water, many of them atop, but it is this very uh, strange sensation, almost a wind rising from the water. My question is, why have I, out of all the trees in the fairy world, out of all your believers, why was I chosen? Why must I bear these difficulties, be disconnected from all my previous friends and true callings of nature? He reaches into his pocket, eyes still glowing green. He never changes the way that he looks, but he thrusts his hand out over the pool and moves his hands. You see the sand swirl and move and form shapes. First kind of vague blobs, but they quickly, as he moves his hands and shapes the sand, it becomes an image very clear to you. You see yourself, your true self, the oak, on top of this beautiful mountain, the mountain of never-ending harvests the place where you once were a lord amongst your people. And you see a familiar series of mortals suddenly stumble across the sand. They're sandy beings, like uh, somewhat uh, amorphous, but you sort of remember these individuals. You remember deciding to help them. And as your memories play out, you see uh, essentially the Honorfall Oakfeld one-shot. Um, <clears throat> And you recognize 
Helping people, helping any mortal within the Feywild is forbidden. There's an element of you that begins to look and you see the sand shift once more. Ortude pulls his hand down, which parts the water for a moment, but as the sand clashes together, you see um, kind of forming in front of you the elders, or the faces of the elders of your community. And you can see the, the elements of the sand that form the eyebrows suddenly crease and look angry. You remember doing something like this, breaking the laws of your community, entitle you to a punishment. And as such, you see these trees hold out their branches, and in the sand picture, they condemn you to be the foulest creature that they could imagine. Richard Karn. <laughs> <laughs> you once wanted to save them, and so they cursed you to be one. Until you can find your honor, whatever that may mean. And then the sand kind of falls beneath the water and re-emerges on top, still dry, um, flat, and plain. Oh, it's kinetic sand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I remember. You have two more questions. Maybe we use them for something less... individual? <laughs> Well, Feld's gonna be like, where did I leave my favorite acorn? <laughs> that was my honor. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, anyone have any suggestions for questions? Because, you know, we could probably get some good stuff here. Um, Helmer kind of turns to Oakfeld and goes, Oakfeld, is there anything else you would like to ask your mutant? I think we can save one for the group. But unfortunately, this is one of the few times Oakfeld has just talked to her directly, and the man needs a win. <laughs> Do you really know if it's, I mean, it's just sad. Oh. What must I do to fill my soul with once the earthly creations of which they whispered to my ears. I wish to speak to them again. Okay. You see Ortude again hold a hand out and the sand begins to vibrate and shift and change and suddenly a single symbol appears in front of you. This symbol, uh, Druidic in nature. Do you speak Druidic? I can't remember. Uh, yes, I think I do. I hope you do. <laughs> If you're a ranger, I think you do. I don't. I, not all unless, rangers oh, got druidic. Unless I think bows don't actually, but I believe for because of one, tree man over right, I think it probably like does. One of the very tree. I feel like it would be a disservice to Oakfeld if it could. Yeah. Practically oh, a druid. It would kind of be like perfect for Oakfeld if it could. <laughs> no. Here's your answer. I don't know what that means. <laughs> no, <please>. Oh boy. <laughs> Oh, a symbol. Sylvan. Vaguely, vaguely tree-like in nature. Though you see the right side of it hooked at right angles. Odd. Disappears. Well, I hope that was a good use of the question. <laughs> I, I do not understand. Awesome. You see, even through this like semi-possessed state, the eyes glowing green, or two smiles. You see, like the slightly smaller tusks, the incredibly white teeth. Use your eyes, Oakfeld. Look for the symbol. Uh, I'm going to sense auras like okay. I normally do, and try to sense an aura around the symbols to see if I can see like a true meaning to it. Okay. You focus your energy in, and as you do, the symbol disappears. It's becoming sand in the water again. Flat, expressionless. The final question. You don't get any sense of aura about it, mm. but you remember the symbol. Okay. I'm going to uh, carve the symbol. Um, I'm gonna like, make my hand like a tree and I'm gonna carve it into my hand. Okay. One of the things that you see from Oakfield for the very first time, the hand into bark. He carves the symbol and you kind of like grimace, you expect blood, but there is none. 
grows back and you see almost like a very poorly done tattoo mm -hmm. same symbol um, almost like scar tissue healed over mm -hmm. so third question let's try to make it count yeah well what do we need to know that we don't already know um That's the real a part. few a lot of things but That's you know functional <clears throat> top of my list would be um Maybe something about where the forge key is now, or where my contact is, since they got taken away by... You know they're in the Underdark. Right, but the Underdark is a pretty big place. Does Malorosite reach them? I don't know. I'm not the Green Matron's whatever he is. I, I don't really have any godly connections, so I don't know how that works, and I'm going to turn to Brad and be like, how do you know? I have no idea, but you know good the question. The underdark? Uh, I know a lot about the Underdark, but... The Aka has is probably negative. <laughs> they, were, they don't seem happy with <laughs> Alright. That sounds like as good a question as any. The only other question we would have would be whether or not their final goal is should we fail and they release the god? Is there like a plan B, a ripcord? Right. <laughs> How anything. boned are we? <laughs> yeah. That would be the only other thing I would ask. The rest yeah, we can that's... figure out in our. I feel like if we get to that point, then it doesn't really matter. Well, if we get to that point, I feel like the only the gods would know. So that's kind of where I'm saying. Right, at. but I'd rather have the answers to things that we can tangibly affect, like finding the forge key, or you know, more concrete answers to what we're about to be getting. I hate to is... say it, but I agree with Akka. <laughs> Why don't you ask where the forge key is? That's a pretty concrete thing to know. Yeah, all right, I gotta phrase it right though, because from past experience, they can be pretty aloof with their answers. She seemed to parse what Oakfield said pretty well. Maybe Oakbell should ask. The answer. <laughs> Decent point both ways. Uh, what is the specific location within the Underdark of the Forge Key, or, barring that, my contact within the Dungan and Antiquities Collective, who was captured while looking for the Forge Key. I don't key. think you ask compound questions. I don't think that's how it works. Well, I asked it. Oh, so God. maybe if someone didn't waste the first two questions, I would be able to ask them separately. She's how is God. Again later. The glowing green eyes down on you. Um, and as you look for a moment, you remember almost this flashback of the last time you were embraced by Melora, this overwhelming presence. Is this the question you wish to ask, Oakfeld? Uh, yes. Skippy. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> he holds his hands out once more. More sand from the pockets rolls across the water here. And as they do, they don't spread out. They form almost straight lines, slightly raised before condensing. And you see suddenly in front of you a cavern, uh, like a, a tunnel of sorts. You can see suddenly from the sand rise up five or six little bumps, little humanoid looking things that move and almost symbolically resting across all of them, a long uh, flat sword, an image or a representation of the forge key being transported. Along the sides of the sand, as these sides rise up to create the walls of the cavern, you see these little spider-like shapes of sand move along. Striders. Steeders. Steeders. Um, Skeeters. Was Akka Akka, Akka rode the Steeters? You recognize Steeters, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> they move. You see, uh, moving over rough terrain, and then suddenly the sand <sighs> moves as if to accelerate. You see winding down caverns across this huge stretch uh, of what looks like bubbling sand. You would imagine water or magma. As the sand moves faster and faster, there's an area where <sighs> like a citadel appears and disappears into a new cavern and suddenly Brenna you see from over top never really from this perspective but you recognize it the caverns and tunnels that surround your home and as it twists and moves and gets closer and closer suddenly 
you can see and visualize what appears before it does in the sand. You see small monuments of um, gnomish features uh, kind of worn away over time from these salt laden uh, winds from the dark salt expanse. Uh, you see small buildings and things of that nature, and for a brief moment, you can see fully articulated in the sand this map of your home. And then it sinks, and the sand falls down to the bottom of this pit. Or two, the eyes go back to their regular uh, sort of sheen, and commune ends. Okay. That's my home. <clears throat> well, that's good. We know that that's a place that we know. That right? is, yeah, it, it is a place. That's we where we it. were heading anyway, kind of? Yeah, because we... Um, okay. Yeah. We were also told it was that everyone there was dead, and it's like... I mean, it's been a while yeah. for you. Sorry. Not, I mean, I'll manage. At least we're sensitive. already heading that way. It's not really my... Yeah, okay. Area of <laughs> you were doing good for a second. <laughs> um... Akka wants to think just, was there anything besides the cedars that would alert him to the fact that maybe this is the gray lady who's doing all of this stuff? Make a flat intelligence check as you watch all of this. Because like, anything the from your area mind. and like everything that's going on smells like gray lady, but also like can't the be sure. Also the Raven Queen? No. Okay. She's this mean gray dwarf that was a jerk. Oh. It's kind of how Akka explains everybody, though, right. so yeah. hard to tell. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Akka, you, know, you know, when you think everyone is mean to you, that 15, might be more about 15. you than... No. Hmm. You see small images and sand shift and move across the water before... No, so it's down. definitely everyone else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She gave me a fucking shield to try and turn me into one of her fucking minions. Not cool. Not cool. I agreed. If, she yeah. made the rest of the group sign a contract on the back of some poor, like, humanoid thrall plucked from a demonic realm. I did not sign that contract. <laughs> he was the only one who didn't sign the contract. <laughs> Brenna's making a mental note to ask Shay what really happened. <laughs> Literally that. that. was shockingly honest. Yeah, but yeah definitely ask Shay later. <laughs> okay, um, great. Thank you, Ortude. You feeling better? Yes. Asterisk. Uh, asterisk, um, not. So, what Ortude did that... Uh, I got the sense that whatever it was now knows where we are. All the more reason to leave where we are. Time to go, I think. Uh, you should probably be aware. Mm. I think it has more to do with us than the location. Oh man, mm -hmm. like a like a tracker. Well, I mean, I don't know what a tracker is. I'm Brenna. I don't I, know. I don't know how this. I, like, my understanding of magic is extremely limited. <laughs> no harm will come to me. Well, that's pretty confident. So I think we're good. <laughs> okay. Others have tried. He turns and looks, and you can see right around the beginning of the compound, there are these slightly raised mounds of sand. You can see like an excess of flora growing from them. One of the mounds oh, slightly larger <laughs> than the other. Um, Others have tried. They have not succeeded. Well, that's great. Um, we should go. Oh, dude, you've done a lot for us today. Is there anything we could do for you in return? He thinks. Yes. One moment. He walks back to his hut real quick. You see, like, <laughs> elements of this uh, skull. But he returns, and he brings this uh, almost like a like a really wrinkly, cracking leather sack. Um, and he opens it up to show you within, there is a single acorn. Mm. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> bring this somewhere where Melora cannot speak. A letter. That seems like a job for Oakfeld. That seems like a perfect job for Oakfeld. I'm going to... And something that we can definitely do. <laughs> that we uh, would be happy to do. Take the acorn, and I'm going to put it in my pocket with a bunch of other acorns. <laughs> <laughs> this acorn, for what it's worth, different. It feels a little bit warmer to the touch. 
it's a little bit larger and most notably the cap of this acorn slightly gilded there's a vague almost like it's it has um been dusted with gold mm. although as you move it across your fingers nothing comes off mm. <laughs> as his oakfeld moves as his acorn moves to oakfeld eleanor's gonna mentally clock what it looks like <laughs> and try to sear it into her memory and be like we cannot fuck up an acorn quest <laughs> of all the things that we oakfeld have to probably do. just buys beer with it and gives him a bunch of acorns <laughs> he turns to you you, Oakfeld, this symbol you saw, yes? Yes. Do you know what that is? No, I do not. Ah. Look for that symbol. It is atop a staff. The staff of the Green Matron. The staff of the Wild. That will help you restore your honor. Thank you so much, Prickly Pear. <laughs> I would be so lost without your guidance. We are all lost at one time. All of us. Time. And he looks at you, Aka. Mm. What <laughs> is your problem? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have the time to go through the list. <laughs> he is not a true believer of the Green Matron. But his heart is ready to accept her. No, it's not. I'm ready to accept leaving okay. so we can Brenna go kind on of with like this world and his Haka in her lips <laughs> and says to him, I think we should thank our host before we leave, don't you? <laughs> Tell me. You are concerned for Azra. Well, that's one of the things, yeah. If she should break free, you will need many to help. Yeah, that's why we're trying to make that not happen. The way you treat people, they will not help you. Oh, yeah, even when I'm nice, people don't really seem to want to help. So. I've never seen you be nice. <laughs> Something um, to consider. Yeah. yeah. I bow slightly and I say, thank you for the lesson. We'll try and help him learn it. <laughs> he bows slightly to you. I bow extra, extra, like. There you go. <laughs> super gracious. Your cape of fucking your head. <laughs> but yeah, you do. I um, can't make a pear, but I make as close to a prickly pear that I can make uh, as a vegetable kind of shape. Okay. And I give it to him. Okay. It's like a zucchini. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but he takes it, and he definitely understands the gesture. Mm. Thank you, Oak. So now can we go? Yes. We yep. Yep. have a schedule Thank to keep. You. Thank you, Oak and R2, and we we'll deliver the acorn. And should we pass by again, we'll make sure to drop in at least say hi. <laughs> Please do. I do not get many visitors here. I would imagine not. I will not forget what you did for me this day. I will see you again, Oakfeld. I am sure. Okay. Off we well, go. I'm just gonna like. <laughs> the ship. Back to the ship. You just take off. I, I'm gonna give Oakfeld a courtesy ride. I don't even ask him anymore. I'm just like schloop. <laughs> and you are hoisted off to the ship. I'll climb up. <laughs> I, I trust your ability more than his to get yourself back up there. I just get large and I just walk right on. Yeah, ironic because the only per the only person who's like fallen and taking damage off the ship is Eleanor. That is true. That being said, you all reach the ship, no problem. Um, Shay just kind of watching out over the desert, uh, especially keeping her eyes towards Biss. Mm -hmm. But you return, no problem. It is probably about 11 a.m. The sun's still rising in the sky. And here in Bis, it is about 73 degrees warm, um, although slowly getting colder as you are moving further north. Hmm. Okay. I have not slept yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the ship in the air, someone else is going to fly, and I'm going to take the best nap of my life. Please just... If anything goes horrifically wrong, just 
try to have it happen after roughly eight hours. <laughs> well, see, I, ask. <laughs> I feel like I've really started to get the hang of things. You just gotta, you know, give me a chance. Yes, this is this is going to be the chance. I wanted to land it last time. It was the best opportunity. There's literally Brenna, nothing around. In the back of your mind, you hear, Brenna, you should fly. <laughs> We can look for food. <laughs> we are hungry. Um, you feel the axe like stowed on your back, <clears throat> tug you a little bit forward. Ow. Um, I'm gonna try to resist that impulse. Okay, if I can. Constitution saving throw. <laughs> um, eleven. <laughs> If you take another huge step forward, the axe is yanking you. All of you see this happening. You see it kind of like, it's the same kind of thing where you're trying to like stand up against a strong wind, but the wind just continues to buffet you, but there is no wind. You have not yet taken off. Um, can I keep trying to like not, or is, or is that a- Make constitution saving throw, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you alright, Brenna? That's a natural 20 for a total of 29. <laughs> oh, you see wow. suddenly Brenna reaches back, grabs the axe, and just <laughs> kind of shoves it. You hear in the back of your mind, <sighs> we need to eat. Are they not okay in your mind, it's almost like this lizard <laughs> slurks and like uh, sort of slithers away for a moment and sulks. Can I, um... I, can I try to like communicate with him, like not out loud, but like telepathically? What do you say? Um, I say, now's not the time. Calm down. <laughs> no one should tell us when we eat, <coughs> Brenna. Um, and I look at the group and I go, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> and I go like under, <laughs> under the deck before anybody can say anything. <laughs> In the place where only Brenna can stand up, right? Yeah. <laughs> like into my little nook. Haka's getting more and more not happy with that situation. Yeah. <laughs> Is she That's okay? right. You're the only one who's really noticed it before. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's get this thing up in the air. All right. Can I try the takeoff? Yes. Okay. Try the takeoff. Here we, we go. We're to the ground, and there's less chance of me immediately dying. All right, so crash. I just have to get a get a feel for it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Be try gentle. To, yep, and making note of the fact that this arm is a little less uh, receptive, responsive. It's like doesn't have the same haptic feedback. It's like you know you're wearing a glove trying to use your touch. It's also not organic. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna like make a note of that and try to kind of like counter the positioning of my other hand to make it sort of steady because I started to veer the last time. Yeah. I'm going to stand directly next to the helm, ready to like shove Akka out of the way okay. and take I over. I fucking got no this. Should we start to catastrophically like... Just land now, just are land. you proficient in flying ships? Uh... <laughs> Does it count as a tool? It doesn't. Then no. <laughs> okay. So go ahead and make a dexterity check. Can I help him? <laughs> go ahead and make a dexterity check at advantage. Okay. So Eleanor's going to be doing your best to kind of guide the positioning of your hands. I got this. Just relax. I got it. Um, dexterity? Yes. 15? <laughs> So you reach into the prow of the ship into this almost supernatural element, this glowing blue field. And as you do, it is this staticky, strange sensation on your one organic hand. Um, and as you reach in, you realize the reason, as you begin to try to take off, the reason that you tilt is one of your hands organic, the other one not. It doesn't really register. So you're one-handing the ship. As you take off, you scrape along the sand, the wings. Oh, oh, I got it, I got it. In. Just gotta readjust. Eleanor grabs, like, into the field, grabs your one good hand and turns it a little painfully, oh. but the ship. <laughs> See, you just Begins gotta to take reposition. Off. Can I like look at his hands and like kind of under see if I can put together the reason why he's struggling so much with this? So for a moment, as like Akka's like, see, I just needed to like get it going. You let go, mm -hmm. and the hand, which kind of holds steady and and definitely the same way that you manipulate the ship, you can tell it's almost like he's holding it. Mm -hmm. As soon as you let go, as soon as your hand withdraws from the field, it begins to tilt slowly. Mm. So you reach out again. Um, for Akka to do this, he needs to take his hand and really just hold from beneath, and it's a balancing act. That's mm -hmm. going to get tiring. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, uh, okay. So, <laughs> let's just like, it looks like your cool, very nice present arm doesn't work very well with this. I, I noticed. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> See, that's why I'm, I'm compensating. Yeah. You might need to just pretend, just completely, that hand is doing literally nothing. Well, if only someone had offered to help you regrow your arm. <laughs> oh, well. But then I wouldn't have all the other cool stuff. <laughs> so. Use your legs. It might be very taxing to do this. So I'm going to go start sleeping now to hopefully. Yeah, I got. I it does have an autopilot. So okay, if you need that's to put your good. arms down and like rest them for a little bit. Yeah, just shake them out a little. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I think I can. I know I can do this. <laughs> I've killed a dragon before, okay? I can fly this fucking ship. I helped build it too, okay? Yeah, this is fine. I do not doubt your. Good, then go to sleep. Capacity. Go to sleep. <laughs> I doubt your experience. <laughs> oh, well, that's why I'm doing it now. This is the experience part. Go sleep. Go <laughs> sleep. <laughs> I'm going to sleep. Shh. I'm going to go underneath the ship and see if she can find Brenna before curling up. Sure. So, Brenna, what are you doing? Um, I think while that was all going on, if Brenna feels like she has some privacy, she's going to try to, like, Take the axe off and like put it to a si to the side and and sort of experiment on like how far can I get from it before you know, have you dirty saving throw. Have you seen um or read his dark materials? Yeah. yeah. You know the part where Lyra and Pan are like testing out. Yeah, it's how like yeah, 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 so it's like that. A dex check, you said? Yeah. Oh, sorry, like I see. Throw. Um oh I have advantage on that. Hmm. Um, that is 21. Okay. You go to take the axe off, and as you take it and put it down, it's as if the momentum of it shifts am amazingly strong. You are pulled over. You stop bracing with your legs against the edge of the ship and kind of kick off, coming back to your feet. You hear it just go, Ugh. I go, what the hell, man? <laughs> Do not put us down. Why? You... Aren't we like a team? Team, feed us Brenna. Then we could be a team. Then we could be strong. Oh, uh, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, Axe. I think we got off on the wrong foot here. Um, we're currently flying through the air. There's, there's nothing for you to eat here. So just chill and don't embarrass me in front of my friends or they're gonna try to take you away from me. We are not Axe. We are Gracial Duneth. The elf has the most meat. <laughs> you can't eat the elf, he's nice. Me? I can't. <laughs> we can, Brenna. I'm not doing that, so if you want to eat again, you'll leave me alone and not try to get me to eat my friends. Make an intimidation check. Dickhead. <laughs> Richard Karn's a pretty beefy guy. Yeah, he is. Oh, oh no, seven! Seven, that's true. <laughs> You oh, see, and you feel almost this moment of, like, glee and triumph. Okay, Brenna, we'll leave Akka alone. <laughs> Does it know my name? <laughs> He's been here this whole time. <laughs> oh, okay then. You don't really need an inside check to feel that that's a lie. Yeah, it, <laughs> you did a great job. Jeez. You also try to put your axe down and it does not leave your hands. Your fingers cannot let it go. Yeah, okay. Um, it's a good thing Akka's up on the top deck okay. not seeing any of this. Suddenly you hear footsteps behind you and mm -hmm. Uh, Eleanor comes down, tired. Ugh. Okay. Um, hey, Eleanor, you take you take a nap. Yep. Great. Uh, um, tired. you mind if I stay down here too, That's like fine. away from the upper deck? Okay, cool. <laughs> Inside check. <laughs> that is probably one of the most suspicious sentences I've heard all day. <laughs> <laughs> 
mind if I stay in this spot I think that I've Brenna, already been? Brenna's in a spot. <laughs> Brenna would like everyone. to confess to someone, and she likes Eleanor, but she also knows that Eleanor like needs to go to sleep, so she doesn't want to like yeah, dump fair. this on her right now. <laughs> I don't know why I keep rolling for wisdom checks. Like it has a plus. I don't know why I look. It was a fifteen. <laughs> fifteen. <laughs> I mean, there's definitely some. It's not a high DC. Here. Yeah, I, I mean, this seems really suspicious. Yeah. And it's almost got... like as you get downstairs for a moment, it's like you caught somebody with their hand on the cookie jar mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, something's definitely going on. Hey, hey Brenna. Are you, are you okay? Yeah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you um, sure? Yeah, maybe we can talk after you've slept. Okay, I just, before I, I nap, I know what we're about to do is a lot. I, I just want you to know that we are, even though we are new friends, we are here to support you. We do care for you quite a lot. Brenna just like goes in for like a big bear hug. She can't help herself. It's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to her. Make a constitution saving throw. Oh no. No. <laughs> oh god. Oh. Natural one for a total of 10. Oh wow. You go in for this big hug, and as you do, you can't help but breathe in wounded already this dried blood there is something as you lean in that just smells so appetizing creep with the capsule you feel <laughs> almost drawn to it your mouth opens and for you eleanor you feel Bretta's breath as she seems to almost inhale your scent oh, are you no. doing anything <laughs> not how i wanted this <laughs> like, to go i just feel like like the awkward freeze like <laughs> like unsure what to do about this. I uh, I think what she what she'll do is actually kind of she'll adjust her grip to her shoulder to Brenna's shoulders. Mm -hmm. So if she needed to, she could spin Brenna around. Okay. Oh, but we'll still kind of like still be in a hug motion, but just like a little bit more of a defensive hug because okay. <laughs> she's a little confused. <laughs> this is really upsetting. You hear? Oh, uh, actually, Brenna, you hear this dragon entity in your mind almost seemed to speak to Eleanor. Though, Eleanor, you do not hear this. Go to sleep, Eleanor. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna try to like break the hug if it'll let me. It's a little tough, but it happens. Okay, um, and I'm just gonna say, okay, I think I'm in some trouble, okay. but you should probably get some rest because <laughs> it might get weird. <laughs> it's about to get real weird. Okay. I'll trust you on this. Uh-huh. Because uh -huh. Yep. you have more than earned that from me. I'm going to go nap. But should anything happen... The light changes. Happen... You don't hear her, but suddenly Shay is down in this space, crouching as if she has just landed. Brenna, suddenly... You feel forcefully your back turn. This axe almost shielding itself from Shay's sight. Mm. That's all. Okay. Shay looks up. I'll watch if you need to sleep. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Once again, Nishai says very loudly in an attempt to have the upper deck here as well. I'm trying for eight hours. If <laughs> we could just keep our shit together for eight hours. <laughs> I'm good! She's <laughs> <laughs> gonna similarly find the corridor where she had like curled up before next to the fridge of holding. <laughs> kind of like <laughs> scooting for now. <laughs> don't touch any of my meat! <laughs> In the back of your mind, Brenna, you hear. We are hungry. Ooh, actually, I know, bud. Help okay. yourself to some of the meats in the <laughs> fridge. <laughs> there are meats in the fridge? <laughs> crunch, crunch. I have a bunch of fancy meats in the mini fridge. It's too stringy. We will wait. Mm -hmm. You hear it frustrated. But there is something about Shay especially. You feel um, Gracial Duneth does not like. Mm. Um... I'm gonna, okay, can I try to also get some rest? And as I settle down, I'm gonna try to like, I'm gonna try to like really 
put the axe right in Shay's view so that maybe just to be like, oh god, please Shay, look at this, see if there's a, you know. <laughs> you pull the axe and it freezes you. You're not really fighting back, but it locks your muscles in place. You hear in the back of your mind, she carries the staff of our destruction. Do not show us Brenna. Interesting. Staff staff of destruction. Yeah, I'll okay, I'll keep you away from that. Don't worry. Brenna. <laughs> we are allowing you to keep control. We can always stop. That's terrifying. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. Good, Brenna. Good night. It's like moon. <laughs> <laughs> but I would like a long rest, so if she's taking one, I'd like to take one too. I imagine that we're just on like opposite sides of the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> totally I'll... uncomfortable for different reasons. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think Brenna feels like all of this will be easier to manage if she's like at full hit points, basically. Yeah. <laughs> she, just wants to, yeah. she just wants to put off dealing with it until like the team is more or less this like at walk. full. But first, a yeah. nap. Well, right. <laughs> Begin to rest. Aka, up on deck, you and Oakfeld, now alone, oh sharing this long journey together. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, the eyes left you straight <laughs> on the ball, just like, <laughs> totally like, blinders on whatever he's saying to me. I'm just kind of like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep. <laughs> <laughs> if he's saying yup, then I'm gonna say, um... <laughs> she was hurt, you know. Sure. You probably do believe in your heart. <laughs> yep, okay. Cool. Uh, I gotta pay attention here, so why don't you go, you know, play with some leaves or something? <laughs> <laughs> the wind chimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the wind chimes are probably talking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, upon hearing this, I'm probably gonna go off into a corner and try to make uh, some kind of creation out of leaves to give to Aka. Probably okay. like, uh, maybe like a necklace full of leaves. Okay. Yeah. Make a, uh, over t- at some point, make a sleight of hand check. We'll determine how that comes out. Okay. Um, but you begin to craft in the back. Uh, the rest of you sleeping under the watchful eye of Shay. Aka, make a perception check as you begin this uh, first leg of the journey. Is this with my... Eyeballs? Special eyes? Is there, is there something special about your eyes? <laughs> Not my eyes, but the things over my eyes that we've discussed every fucking week now for the last month. <laughs> As you gaze out over the ocean <laughs> with your golden elvish eyes, <laughs> see beyond the realm of mortal men and through the reality of time. Make a perception check. No purposes. Uh, okay, that's pretty good. Let me see. That is a 23. The first 10, 15 minutes, you really just turn around and watch as Biss sinks behind you. There is something to what Artude said that does stick with you, especially as your teammates continue to remind you. (laughs) You look back, you see Oakfeld fiddling with some leaves. But aside from that, you don't really see much. Another hour goes by. And then over the course of maybe like the next 10 minutes, you see the small shape sort of appear on the water as you go. A little, little fishing boat. As you pass over top, you can see there is like a, like a sort of a plump man who is fishing over the side, turns, kind of shields his eyes from the sun as he watches you pass. Um, Brenda, it's good that you're not on deck at this moment, but no problem, you just fly over top. Nothing particularly uh, interesting about this Plump man, besides Just that he's nice and plump. plump and oh, tasty. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's weird. It must be someone Brenna recognizes. Nope. No, no, he's just really tasty looking. With the sixteen, with the sixteen, over the next uh, hour or two, you take some leaves and kind of uh, weave them. You take really long leaves, yeah. sort of like curling them in on themselves to make what are like essentially like a lay. Yeah. Trying to make. yeah, yeah. And then around that, um, instead of having to like string that through flowers, you do one better and you grow actual flowers off this mm. wreath. And then you have what is essentially a lay. Mm. Um, yeah, looks pretty good. The temperature drops over the next couple hours as you begin to get further north. 
and it's subtle at first, going from 73 to 70, but as it gets past noon until like 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, it begins to get markedly colder. Um, the rest of you who are sleeping beneath can mark off a long rest. Thank you. <laughs> I have hit points once it's again. <laughs> nice. It is maybe 4 o'clock in the afternoon as you come to, and Brenna, as you do, the first thing that you hear is, Good morning, Brenna. It's not morning. <laughs> That's all you hear. <laughs> um, is so is Eleanor like up and about now, looking yeah, refreshed? You guys get up roughly at the same time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, is is Brenna familiar with the concept of like curses and stuff, like? Like Hannah, sure, Hannah thinks that she feels like she's cursed. But absolutely, that, yeah. Okay. And, and I would say, yeah, over the course of time that you've gotten to know this and interacted with it, it certainly feels like a cursed item. Okay. There's something different to this than the curses that you've not seen or experienced, but that you're aware of through your early teachings that didn't go great um, within your own city. You know that these exist, but you're unaware of one being attached to an entity like this. This mm-hmm. is very different in that regard. Okay. But elements of curses, yes, certainly. Um, all right. So I say to Eleanor, how you feeling? Um, refreshed. <laughs> That's awesome. I think this axe is cursed. <laughs> <laughs> My oh, ears it wants up. me to eat people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my ears are that's tingling. A pretty, I don't know why. I'm that's like, a pretty bad curse. Is it like, in the sense of like, li- like anyone just L- like eat anyone? Yeah. Some I, it wants to eat Aka. <laughs> <laughs> Odd choice. I really sure. feel like I've been able to keep a lid on it, mm-hmm. but um, I, I might need some help. Yeah. Well. Okay. First of all, uh, I'm very sorry your ex is cursed. <laughs> it seemed like you were having fun with I it. I was having fun with it. <laughs> um, but, you know, good news. Uh, if nothing else, this won't be the first cursed object we've been tracking. That is true. I had forgotten about so, Aka's situation. <laughs> hopefully it won't end quite the same way. His was violently ripped off of his... Yeah. But... <laughs> so in the back head. of your mind, you hear, "No one will rip me from you, Brenna." I go, "Shut up! Shut up!" Okay, so he talks to me, like in my head. I, it's, um, <clears throat> it sucks. I, I think maybe um, Jay can help. I don't know. I mean, and I like look over, and I'm like. Probably sometime after you went to sleep, like midway through, she would have gone up. She wandered out, yeah, okay. The, the deck is a little claustrophobic for her. Okay. Um, but yeah. You know, if anyone could at least have an idea, it seems like Shay has a lot of experience. <laughs> uh, being apparently the lone survivor of the finger gang, which at this point is just like still having like... Why do they call it the high of are my thing. Okay, fine. Yeah, so, but it wants to eat you. We will. Uh, we should work out some sort of like um, safety word. Yeah. Safety word. So just in, just in case, because Alvin's hot too. I think I think I really just want to keep my distance um, for now, because I don't. It, I mean, did you see how it was like? Like, I mean, it can like make me move sometimes. Mm. I. I Okay. Well, we will figure out a way. (laughs) We will figure out a way to mitigate this until we are able to deal with it properly. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's ask you to eat people. Is it just people, or is it just is it just in general? Like you need food? I don't know. Actually, people mostly, right? People. As you like think that, in your mind you hear giants taste best. Oh god, he said. He said the giants taste best. I just fought a giant. Shit. I know. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, okay, okay. We can. We're going to. 
there are there giants in the north? Okay, I'm freaking out here, Eleanor. I know. So we kind of like grips <laughs> and Brenner's shoulders like this. I like how your first like solution is, well, can we go get a giant? Can we find a giant for you to eat? Got, like one giant. That should last for at least a couple weeks, right? Eleanor is nothing if not supportive. You guys supportive. have killed a giant no. before. There's a lot of meat to kill. Yeah. Yeah. And morally questionable at times. Okay, so you can grab the Brenner's shoulders. How much does an axe eat anyway? We will. I like to imagine it like kills it and that satisfies. It's not the amount of meat. That's my imagination. We will get this separated from you at some point. We'll figure this out. But for now, we'll just we'll figure out how to mitigate it to make sure, at the very least, it doesn't try to do something terrible to you. Or like, through me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really strong. You are. I don't want to eat Akka. <laughs> good, good. That's a good place to start. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's. We should let everyone else know that the axe is cursed. <laughs> I unfortunately cannot and do not know much about magic. Uh, so uh, while I can, even, <laughs> I can do my best on the on keeping you and everyone else safe from each other and <laughs> hopefully the axe, I can't disenchant anything. <laughs> so I'd be happy to just. Well, okay, so, okay, it's like it's a really good axe, though. <laughs> I mean, you, you have been wrecking shit. Yeah, so. but um, you were wrecking shit before us too, though. So it's not all the axe; it is mostly you, Brenna. I, aw. <laughs> it's mostly me. Nope, it's both of us. <laughs> it's kind, of, kind of like, is it like okay? We'll go talk to, to Akka and Shay. Oh, mm-hmm. Shay first. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I feel like she might take this better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll work out a plan. Also. You feel unease in the back of your mind as she says that? Yeah. Um, y- yeah, yeah. I, w- I want to talk to Shay. Yeah. Um, I don't think it likes Shay. We hate Shay. Yeah, so let's go. <laughs> you might have to drive me. <laughs> so, Eleanor's gonna Cute. pop her head through like the hatch and okay. see, and then kind of look around and see sure. what's going on on deck. As you're doing that, Brenna, in the back of your mind, you hear, "You wish to free yourself of our power. Fine. Bring us to the soul jar. Make." us whole let us eat again then you will be free <clears throat> Brenna <laughs> I fr- do I know what the soldier is? I, is that that's the thing we're going after? Right? You're going after it, yeah. Yeah. Explain yeah. what it is. Uh, okay. <laughs> um okay, I just go I'll think about it. And then as as firmly as I can, I follow Eleanor up toward Shay and like really just just try to walk toward her. Your body doesn't move, and you hear in your mind again, Brenna, you have greatness, but you could have nothing. Do not bring us to Shay. He's so mean. Um. Uh, so I look at Eleanor. I'm like, maybe you should just, maybe you should just go. Okay, okay, okay. Um, oh, there's. I don't know if anyone mentioned this. There is meat in the fridge. <laughs> it might be very cold, but That's it is. <laughs> <laughs> but it is there. If you're. Um, God, it's worth a try. All right, so I go over. I like go try to eat some of the, okay. the cold meat. You go over to the, the chest of colding and you open it up. Within, you see these beautiful, expensive tomahawk steaks. These like unbelievable mm. delicacies. But in the back of your mind, all you hear is, "This is trash," <laughs> but it will feed us. No. <clears throat> all of it is gone. <laughs> I just, I just eat, I eat them. Brenna, for a small person, you consume all three of these. Wow. God damn it! Like I never gets to have good food. I'm sorry. There are 
other things in there, Akka. <laughs> Including three bones left from these uh, little stakes, these circles that rest in the I know, but it was either the stakes or you, bud. <laughs> you know? Choices. At the very end of your meal, you just hear, oh, meat without blood is not food, Brenna. <laughs> We're learning more. Them. <laughs> um, I go. All right, just just settle down, okay? We're going toward the soul jar. Just just chill. If we come across some enemies, then maybe I'll think about feeding you if you're nice to me. Make a make a oh, man. Starfinder's killing me because of the skill name changes. <laughs> Diplomacy. This is persuasion check. That's the name of the skill. <laughs> Three. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I will do as I want, Brenna. <laughs> it's so mean. Um, Brenna's gonna try just stopping interacting with him because she doesn't know what else. Like, <clears throat> she can't go up. She can't like get him to stop talking. So she's just gonna give him the silent treatment now. <laughs> Brenna. Every like five or six minutes, you just hear <laughs> Brenna. <laughs> hey, Brenna. <laughs> and it just continues it's like, like that. The worst. It changes. And like from now on out, like every now and then, it goes from him being like angry, not really angry, to more just like he's trying to annoy you. Mm-hmm. Hey, you just hear, listen. Brenna, Brenna. Hey. Brenna, Brenna, Brenna. Uh-huh. As long as you want the bear, that is what you hear. It's like okay, I'm child. gonna like curl up in the fetal position and just wait for Eleanor to come back. <laughs> hey, listen, listen. Oh, hey, this, this axe was so good for like two sessions, <laughs> and now it is just yeah, trauma is central so fun, here. We can solve this problem. Uh, <laughs> Eleanor w- would seek out Shay with his team is not here, and probably like gonna like hidden the actual conversation beyond like try like keeping her voice really low to be like hey, I think we have a slight situation with the new axe. She's going to say this axe doesn't know our names. Uh oh. I don't know but I'm going to assume yes, because it stated its desire to eat Akka. <laughs> that means that it can perceive what we say. Mm-hmm. As much as I trust Brenna, we shouldn't have these conversations in front of her. Mm-hmm. Fair. But we do need to solve <laughs> that eventually. <laughs> I might have a solution, but not here. Hmm. All right, next week. <laughs> <laughs> like standing at the at the ship, uh, the wheel, at the ball, the orb. Yeah. You guys are probably out at the front of the ship and like, <laughs> the ship kind of. <laughs> As I see um, the rest of the people going, I walk over to Akka and present him my gift. What? What is this? And I what? put it over his head. I heard this because. Is this your body hair? That you are a true believer. <laughs> body hair. <laughs> it is many parts of me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you. I see you are speechless. <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> Words will find you. If Eleanor clocks, like she's just gonna let it happen. <laughs> Akka's like at the wheel, doesn't want to let go because doesn't want to crash the ship. Wants to take this off so badly, but doesn't want to touch it. And he's like, I wish I could still telekinesis pull things off of me, but I can't. So mm. I'm just like, <laughs> so I think I'm just gonna stand there, just like <laughs> until something else happens. <laughs> And just keep flying the ship, but like go. really uncomfortably now. <laughs> uncomfortably, you fly the ship. <laughs> Five o'clock, six o'clock. As the um, day transitions into the evening and the light begins to spin down, it is getting much colder 
on deck. You uh, sort of look over the side and you can see where the waves were crashing and really lively before the sea is becoming a little bit more calm. It is getting closer to 50, uh, maybe even a little bit below in terms of uh, Fahrenheit. And so it is getting quite cold. And as the last couple rays of light begin to show, um, you see below you the sea transitions to a place where it now is freezing in mm. large, vast sections. Akka, you, with the possession of the map, uh, see that this is called the Sea of Pains. Mm. These large, um, sometimes miles wide stretches of ice, resembling kind of panes of glass that float across the water here. This is what makes it impossible for most ships to reach stone flow. Um, this ice impossible to break through unless you have a stone flow dwarven iron sides, uh, steam powered. But um, as you go over top, you can fly over it no problem. However, you are getting tired. Yes. Uh, <laughs> You've been like tense for the past four hours, and so yeah, real tired now. I don't know, go and relieve Akka. You feel better? <laughs> yes. Could you get this off of me first? Get what else? <laughs> Flowers? Yeah. Okay. I'll just remove it. Apparently, Eleanor's the only one that doesn't have any hang ups about. Apparently not. You take <laughs> Transfiguration. <off> <laughs> I'm just like, it's like his pubes and stuff. Whoa. Oh, that's a pretty I big leap. Don't think that's so true. It many parts of his body. It's I there. saw someone drink his tea. <laughs> it was delicious. Thank you. I'm gonna go. Go. <laughs> T-Rex arm. Yeah, I'm gonna go, uh, just like go stand and stare off into the distance <laughs> for four hours. Sure. <laughs> you go into your meditation in the most uncomfortable way possible. But you do. For the rest of you, your circadian rhythm is now off. Mm -hmm. um, as you begin to get into a seven, eight o'clock and the light begins to die down, the stars come out overhead. Um, it is getting much colder, about 40 degrees now. And you'd imagine, after about an hour or two, you will need cold weather gear, or else it is going to begin to become problematic. Mm -hmm. okay. Did we think of that? <laughs> no. No, we didn't. Oh, good. So, good. Aka has cold weather gear. <laughs> um, nice she doesn't need it. Eleanor does not. I love how clothes have been such like a weird problem <laughs> this whole time. Yep. All right, uh, so uh, Eleanor's gonna, Aka's zoned, right? Is yeah, looking over, I can just still kind of like, uh, like that. Yeah, you perceive. Got bigger I'm like yeah. uh, yeah. passively, you know. <laughs> but he is resting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. resting, but I'm aware. Um, As it gets colder, I'm gonna turn into a juniper tree. Okay. <laughs> more resistance to uh, sure. winter. Yeah. A little so, taller, a little darker bark. I'm just gonna engage the autopilot. <laughs> okay. And go get the map from Akko. Like, hey, can I borrow the map? Mm. Okay. Oh. Yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of look at it and be like, is there, are there any like um, outposts or anything that would like be roughly this far north? Um, as you're looking, so the area that you are is several hours from land, from the, from the coast. So yeah. not like super close. Mm -hmm. The closest thing that you can see would probably actually be at this point called Stoneflow. Okay. Still giving uh, the map scope maybe like 12 hours away. Mm -hmm. So not terribly far, mm -hmm. but you still can't even see land. So not like a, an outpost. Mm -hmm. Okay. So knowing that it's getting colder and she doesn't have like anything to do about that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, um, this is, this is an issue. Okay. I can't fly if I'm freezing to death. <laughs> And nothing's close. Uh, everyone's asleep except for Aka. Or down below. Oakfeld's awake, but I don't know how much this whole. <laughs> Oakfeld's awake. I believe Brenna is awake, awake, but having some trouble. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. A mental health moment for Brenna. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Oak Oakfeld? Yes. Um, 
Wait, back no leave. Can you by any chance produce like warmth? I see some my heart. <laughs> As if But yes, if I've noticed that your kind does not do so well in these colder climates and perhaps I could make you something. That would be you know what? I'll if you can if you can successfully make something, that would be greatly appreciated, because we have a slight problem. Um it seems like the where we're going is significantly colder and we did not grab anything for that. So are there any like is there any wildlife? <laughs> make a perception check. So Wow, that's probably that's gonna be sub ten. <laughs> so it is a crisp night. And as you look out, there are wisps of clouds in the sky. Uh, if you look back behind you to the south, there is a sheet of gray, the storm now moving out and over the sea to the east. No longer a concern for you. You look around, you don't see any birds, maybe like chased away by the storm, still not really having proximity. You look down. One thing that you do see in this ocean, as you pass over beneath the ice, at first it's almost like you imagine maybe the reflection of a star. But as you pass overhead and you get even further north, you begin to see more and more of these glows beneath the ice. Um, with that perception check, kind of hard to tell what these are, but vaguely yellow, vaguely blue here and there, almost like stars beneath the ocean. Mm -hmm. There is a beauty to it, although given past events, you're a little concerned. Mm -hmm. But that is what you see, no animals necessarily. Do I know anything about this area? Have I heard anything about this area? Better. Uh, one second, I think that's just a flat roll for me. I think I'm kind of dumb. Yep. <laughs> so 15. 17? 15. Oh, 15. Okay. Yeah. Um, thinking about this area and what you might know about it, it's almost like unused by people because it's just a big pane of ice. Mm -hmm. Dwarves with the um, iron sides can traverse it, and you've heard of iron sides. They're a wonder. There are no ships on the planet that rival them in terms of technology. They're powered uh, by water and heat alone. You have no idea how that might even function, um, but they're able to just crack through the ice effortlessly, and they are massive. There are more metal in some dwarven iron sides than there are in an entire villages. So um, they're like a marvel of engineering, and for somebody who spends a lot of time on ships, Probably you've always wanted to see one. They're really rare where you're from. Um, as she's kind of looking over, I'm going to start taking measurements okay. of <laughs> Eleanor. Um, so you see, uh, um, you see Oakfeld take the finger, the nail becomes like a long vine, and then he just snaps it off and begins to like measure you. <laughs> you know how to do this? Oh, oh. You know how to tailor? <laughs> There's not like tailors in the Thay Wild. Everybody makes their own clothes. Yeah. Everybody has a sewing machine. I guess. It's not if you're a tree, do you really need clothes? Probably not. Yeah, but I mean, like, for gifts. <laughs> to the other trees? There's, no, there's I mean, like, other people. That was the whole yeah. point. Yeah. And I thought you weren't supposed to give gifts in the Feywild. Oakfeld. If for the people who are not from the Feywild, okay. there's a very complex system. Yeah. Okay. So, isn't the whole point that he kind of got kicked out for, like, liking humans too <laughs> for, much? Yeah, for not following the rules. <laughs> yeah. um, He's a rule breaker. Instead of vines, I'm actually probably going to be using uh, hemp bamboo. Okay. Um... Well, not bamboo, just hemp, I think. Yeah, hemp. From, from, yeah, from the marijuana plant, <laughs> as it comes from. Um, as it comes from. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where that comes from. You say it like it's like a naughty thing. Well, I don't want people uh, to go home and smoke uh, the, the, the marijuana plant. <laughs> All right, so I'll go home and do it. Um, how long did I turn Oakville to be like, after like pausing, just kind of holding herself still for a second <laughs> <laughs> while this is happening? She's like, you know, uh, anything is helpful. Thank you. But also, if you happen to see a very, very large metal ship, and I don't, let me know. And then we go back to flying. <laughs> I will keep my eyes peeled. Um, and as I'm taking her measurements, I'm going to start making kind of like uh, a jacket with like kind of like a hood for her arms like a little bit like arms that go over like 
not okay. like gloves. I don't think I can make gloves. You're making almost like elongated sleeves yeah. to serve yes. the function of gloves. Yes, exactly. I love it. Okay, go ahead and make a sleight of hand check. Nope. Um, and I would say, <laughs> how are you? What are you using to make it? Just, just raw yourself. oak felled material. You guys are high level. More there's some things hair. that you guys can do that really, you know, there's there's relative uh, challenges to you at early level. Really not challenges. Five. I'm gonna use lucky. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Six. I don't, use <laughs> I don't think you can double you lucky. Can't double lucky. Yeah, I think you can only do it once. Yeah, got to yeah. Gotta take high. that six. Okay. Okay. Second one. Luck does not. You <laughs> don't really. So you took this piece of hemp and you measured Eleanor, but as you look at it, you didn't mark it in any way. So you have no real measurements. But you know what? You take it and you're like, I remember roughly what this was. Mm. At the end of maybe an hour or two you have like a leafy sort of garment mm. it is way too small for anybody including brenna in your party mm. it's the kind of thing where like you begin to draw on a piece of paper and you realize halfway through you're running out of room there's <laughs> no way you're gonna finish like the, the word that you're writing um and so you just have uh like a very very small shirt with really long sleeves uh i'm gonna present it to her <laughs> uh could you stand still for a moment? <laughs> and I'm gonna try to wrap it around her and then realize. So oh. revealing. Mm. I think it's a I... scarf. <laughs> it, it basically like gets almost like hat size. This is so, you like maybe thought this would stretch and it definitely mm. doesn't. Um, it just kind of won't really go over Eleanor's head. Mm. Perhaps you could wear it on your head and I could try again. I'm gonna like takes it off for a second, kind of looks at it, and she's gonna like try to figure out if there's any way to salvage this into. Oh, because like it's getting cold. Yeah. And <laughs> just to get an extra little bit of warmth, she's not gonna be picky about it. Could she like scarf it? Yeah, absolutely. You take the part that is mostly like an elongated, really, it looks like just another sleeve. It's like almost like a T of sleeves, basically. <laughs> um, but you take that, you take the two short ends, mm -hmm. kind of rest them on your shoulders, and just throw it around. Mm -hmm. And you wear, now billowing in the wind, this leafy <laughs> scarf. Okay. It is negligible in how much it does. Mm. You yep. begin to shiver. And for all of you, the ship begins to shake. Mm -hmm. As your hands quiver holding onto these controls, the ship also shakes. Mm -hmm. Has it been four hours yet? For Probably me? about three. Okay, so right. I'm still... Recognize, like, well, this is going to get dangerous. I'm going to start looking for a place to land, even if it's not ideal. Yeah. Just a key to the clock in case I can't keep my hands steady enough to be safe. Make a perception check. Fifteen. Fifteen. So, you look down, and as far as you can see, there are huge swaths of ice. Any of them should be easier than landing on, like, a beach or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's hard to tell from this distance how thick any of the ice is. So you are taking a bit of a gamble no matter what. Mm -hmm. That being said, as you look below, below, there is no break immediately evident. You don't see any creases that sometimes form between these big panes. Mm -hmm. And so this seems like a relatively sturdy place, at least as much as any. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I'll make the attempt to land on the thickest guess I can make. <laughs> okay. Because I don't know if I can keep... I don't want to actually rattle the ship apart. Okay. So. You begin to descend. The ship shuddering somewhat as you now are really shaking. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no worries. As you uh, begin to shake more and more, the ship uh, begins to vibrate almost. And for you, Akka, who are trying to sleep, it becomes kind of hard. Uh, you almost are pulled out of your trance. Actually, make a constitution saving throw. Because you definitely, um, this is something that, that pulls your attention away. All right. This is not a magical effect, right? No, this is, not. <laughs> <laughs> this is called physics. It's always worth asking. <laughs> 13. It begins to shake, and you feel your armored boots sliding across the deck. Elements of moisture that had uh, splashed across earlier now frozen and slick. Mm -hmm. Your eyes, you know that you are perfectly still, but your vision is beginning to slide. Mm -hmm. You feel your hip touch the railing as you continue to try to hold the trance. As this shakes more and more, you feel your body begin to tilt over and over, and literally 30 minutes before completing this, sh this long rest, you are faced with the moment where you recognize you are going to fall over this railing. God, I gotta float back, I guess. And you just 
<laughs> Upright. Everything okay? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not gonna fight, find out whether or not we land. <laughs> A little rough, but no problem. Okay. And I'm gonna like. Why did we land? What the. <laughs> I'm like literally like shaking. <laughs> and I'm gonna like quickly run downstairs and look through our supplies to see if we have a fire, a torch, a source of warmth. <laughs> oh my gosh. You didn't bring it. <sighs> You didn't bring a jacket, and we were going. You knew we were going north. Eleanor uh, disappears below the deck. I am from the south. There are that several chests and boxes that hold rations and things mm -hmm. that you reviewed before. Going through, there is a bag that contains three sets of cold weather gear. Mm. Um, none of them will fit any of you perfectly. This is, they're just kind of like general cold weather gear, big um, wraps made out of cloth and, and, and um, furs and things of that nature. But you can definitely use this to stay warm. Okay. Dope. I'm going to take a slightly oversized one. Because I can. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Do I get to like finish my long rest? No, like no, if that's I, not how it works. No, you don't I, like, go back. I'm just going to grab another it's 30 like, minutes real quick. You know? Yeah. Uh -huh. Does does Brenna notice this happening? Yeah, absolutely. You All look right. up from your fetal position. Uh, you hear in the back of your mind, Brenna, 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 Brenna. Brenna. Um, but suddenly you hear Eleanor coming down. Okay. Um, I go. So when I see her pulling out cold weather gear, I'm like, can I get one of those? And also, like. I can't do anything. I don't understand. I don't okay. Gonna... Brenna's going to take the, the cold weather gear, throw it over her head, and back into the fetal position. <laughs> Brenna, Brenna, Brenna! Again and again, just calling your name. Yeah. But you continue to ignore it. I'm just like. I mean, I'm sure at some point deck. I'll have to make a check, but until you make me do that, I'm going to just fetal position it up. <laughs> That'll be roughly when you start to face exhaustion. Yeah, okay. So. For the rest of you, it is uh, roughly midnight now. The stars out overhead, and you are all resting on this sort of glacier. It is quiet here. <laughs> the wind does blow across now and then. But what are you all doing? So after putting on a little cold weather gear to go back up and just kind of like try to do... <laughs> A little calisthenics. A little calisthenics. Yeah. Just to kind of like get some heat back into her system. Sure. And then... <laughs> you good? <laughs> Ignore Anga. Because sure. I'm just like, listen. How much, how long have I been awake for at this point? At this point, uh, probably about three and a half, four hours. Because Ak went to sleep and didn't quite get to finish his yeah, okay. long rest. Yeah, okay. I think like, be like, okay. Um... <laughs> I'm gonna go back to the and look at him and be like, listen, I'm, I woke up and it was cold. I didn't think it would be get this cold this fast. I've never been this far north. Really? Because, you know, I met you in Yorn. That's more north than where we are right now. But Yorn, interestingly, does not have the same cold temperatures as this place. But getting to Yorn, you gotta go through some areas. I always teleport into Yorn. <laughs> <laughs> you Don't you just, all right, remember the yes yeah. and this. Like, okay, okay yes. yes and it. You know, I was, listen, I have spent most of my life sailing on warmer seas. Um, that sounds I, nice. Yeah, it did. Yeah. yeah, it was great. <laughs> Guess what? I now, I put it back, I put on, I found a jacket. Good, fun. yeah. You I'm going to go back to flying. For, for that this whole floor. conversation, the sleeves are like, <laughs> <laughs> wrong, yeah. it's too big. <laughs> it's great, actually. Yeah. Um, all right, I'm going to go back to flying. Great. And you can go back to sleep. Well, I'm already up now, so I don't know if I can. You know, it takes, you know, the... <laughs> Well, while you're up, can you de-ice the, sh the, ice the sh <laughs> <laughs> or at least the deck? Is that something you magical people can do? Uh, <laughs> you go back to flying the stupid flying ship. <laughs> magical thing you people can do, jams her hands in and the ship <laughs> very abruptly begins to lift off and away from the ice. <laughs> but no problem. Yes. You begin to lift up. I'm gonna also try as Shay up here. Yeah. So I'm gonna be like, make iron and Shay, just kind of like 
gesture as much as I can down and be like, can you like check on Brenna? We'll try not to alert Aka to like the concern because <laughs> that's the last thing she wants at the moment. Okay. I'll slide a fan this if I have to. Uh, I would say, Aka, what are you doing right now? I mean, I'm still like angrily glaring. <laughs> Make a slide of hand. That's Aka. Perfect. Because it doesn't matter because I get an automatic 25. <laughs> oh, yes. You do not have a passive above 25, correct? No. Yeah. So, Shay just kind of stands up and quietly sighs before going below deck. One of the places she does not like. For the rest of you, <laughs> what are you doing? I, can I try to take a, a long rest again? Okay, you stock back off the back of the ship and stare off, <laughs> angrily resting. I'm I'm angry. Okay. Aka, uh, I'm just like for four hours, just Oakfell kind of sits down on the deck and begins to rest as well. For the two of you, you below deck with Shay, um, you now a little bit warmer and helming the ship. You begin to fly further. Over the course of the next three or four hours, the temperature drops further. It is maybe 30 degrees here, quite cold. Even with the cold weather gear, your face is chapped. You've never had an experience quite like this before. And at first, it's almost like you feel like your eyes are playing tricks on you. You just want to see land. But then, suddenly, you see uh, gray silhouettes in the darkness as these mountains seem to almost loom up in front of you. Mm. The mountains that feature heavily in the north. You don't see the coast yet, but you can see elements of this. Mm. And because it is 841, this is where we're going to take a quick break. Yeah. So it is 841. Uh, we're going to come back in about 10 minutes. We'll, we'll, we'll call it uh, Eight, I couldn't do it. 852. 852. We'll be right back. Math is hard sometimes for me.
welcome back. Thank you for sticking with us through the break. If you did, we'll just jump right back into our game. All of you, some sleeping, some sleeping for the second time, some still awake. I never <clears> sleep. <throat> I only meditate. <laughs> some meditate for the second time. So, uh, elves. Eleanor, you see in the gray horizon the silhouettes of peaks. And over the next hour, almost emerging from the gray, you see an area where the ice transitions into land, snow. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the other thing that you're realizing as you go and it continues to get colder is that you have to keep, excuse me, you have to keep adjusting the ship. Mm -hmm. The temperature change in the air is changing the way that the ship is interacting. And so it is becoming harder and harder to control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for you now proficient with the craft, nothing, nothing you can't handle, at least not yet. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> As you continue well into the night, and the dark transitions into the first gray of morning, you can mark off for long rest. Yay! Mm -hmm. nice. Oakfeld, you are about six hours into your long rest. Mm -hmm. In your mind, whatever dreams your plant has, um, you feel the sun beginning to rise. Mm. <clears throat> but for the rest of you, as you wait, you can see the cold gray lands of the north beginning to unfold beneath you. Looking at that map, you are probably no more than about two hours away. Mm -hmm. But as you see the mountains loom up overhead in front of you, you realize it will be difficult going. They rise up vertically here in a place or in a way that you've not seen since you aren't. And from there, you're looking down. Here, you are looking head on or up. And these are massive mountains. Slowly, almost unconsciously, you begin to raise the ship a little bit. Um, what are you all doing as all this is happening? I'm probably going to look at the map and see, you know, all right, how far till we get to where we're heading? And then, like, when we get there, what's the best way to go? <clears throat> and also, if we have to pivot because of something that we hear about from Mr. Gift sure. when he gets back in touch. Um, like, what's the best way to, like, be able to kind of cover all of these bases that we've got sure. to deal with? <clears throat> Make a uh, survival check as you examine the map. Eleanor, for you, you raise the ship higher and higher. And as the mountains begin to kind of crawl alongside you and beneath you, you need to move higher still. Mm -hmm. And it is getting very cold. Mm -hmm. 14, I'm going to... You know, start the day off, well, I guess the like middle of the evening off fresh with the flash of genius. <laughs> sure. get 19. It is roughly like six in the morning now, but you're really kicking off the day with a flash of genius. <laughs> start off the day right. So that's 19? Yes. That's part okay. of waking up. It's flash of genius in your cup. <laughs> yeah. You examine the map, and as you trace your finger along, you find a place where where the mountains are you might be able to pass through. This is not a one-to-one -one representation necessarily, and so still relatively difficult, but you do mark around stone flow. The mountains rise up in a very strange way, even on the map. Mm. They seem to almost burst out. And so, yeah, similar to that. Um, no matter how you approach, if you did not have a flying ship, it would be near impossible. Natural but walls. With Eleanor at the helm, you do see those strange, almost strikeout mountains begin to loom up, and Eleanor is able to keep the ship well above. Okay. That does keep you, for what it's worth, close to seven or 800 feet in the air. Mm -hmm. You recognize, looking down, all you see is the fall of snow beneath you, and it's not falling on the ship. <clears throat> you are up quite high here. Mm -hmm. I'm cool with that. <laughs> Look, Phil, you wake up. I'm going to go out and salute the sun. As Oakfeld climbs up from like being cramped down beneath, as he stretches, and you can hear, unlike the cracking back of a normal oh, person, morning, it's like this <laughs> of wood as it stretches. Yeah. Oakfeld, as your hands go out, the first couple uh, rays of light just spill over the horizon, mm. almost in tune with nature. Uh, you wake as the sun rises. Mm -hmm. 
But all of you now awake, you can see the north beneath you and around you. And I would say for the very first time, you being the most affected by this cold, you realize it's starting to get a little warmer. Make a perception check. Dirty 20. There you go. <laughs> At first, it's hard to kind of pick out the changes, but as you're getting closer and closer, it gets a little bit more warm, and you start to search for a reason why. Mm-hmm. Even in Yorn, it had gotten to a point where maybe it was like 50, 60 degrees, and that's warm for the north. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but every now and then, there is just a faint zephyr, and it is truly warm. You can't find any sources with the 20, but what you do notice is as you get further north and those mountains jutting out seem to almost uh, begin to pass beneath you, the foothills, Mm -hmm. you see the snow transition to earth and stone. There's nothing, no snow that builds up on these mountains. Mm -hmm. And here and there, as you get close to the top and the peaks pass maybe 100 feet beneath you, there is little tufts of even grasses here that grow. You progress over this mountain line, and for many of you, actually, you might be the first people uh, who go over this um, without any natural ability to fly. You go over the top of what is essentially a basin circled by these mountains, and all around, maybe 600 feet out from what is the mountain that is known as Mount Stoneflow, uh, there is just green grass that grows. You see birds that move around it. Uh, There is no cold, and as the wind blows across, suddenly the cold is almost blown from you. It is a warm wind. Hmm. 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 Well, that's not expected. Dragons, dragons, this is a dragon. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. Uh... 13. You look down with your special elf eyes. <laughs> <clears throat> but you see nothing. No dragons, no huge shadows cast by winged creatures. Hmm. Okay. You don't see any either, for what it's worth. As you're looking, you do see birds. You see, um, you know, little creatures moving around the edge of the mountain as you get closer and closer. But one thing that you do notice is here and there with these warm winds there comes updrafts mm-hmm. and you begin to realize it is trickier flying through here than you originally thought and all at once for all of you boom, the ship jerks dexterity saving throws please i'm gonna say shay makes hers with no problem <laughs> is that cool 30 20 30 20. 19. 19, nice. 17. 17. 29. All of you managed to keep your footing. The snow kind of melting away from the ship over the last 20 minutes or so, you're able to, to not be thrown flat. But you have to catch the ship kind of right. Over the next couple of minutes, this happens again and again. But skilled as you are, you're able to overcome this obstacle. And... As you get closer still to Cold Stone Flow, the top of this mountain looms into view. There's an expanse of grass. Um, You see a few stumps of old, long, petrified trees. But most importantly, you see these stone shapes. Are we heading to Stone Flow or Colteron first? Weren't we going Bing Bing? No, so you guys had planned to go to, because uh, Mr. Gift had said to go straight there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, never, yeah. Because <clears throat> you also know the, the, um, the forge key is being carried beneath right, the Right, because they took it. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, I think the only question mark we had is whether or not we were actually going to go to Coldstone Flow itself or just bypass right. it and try and, and go, go straight to Underdark. Mm-hmm. Yeah, except that um, our contact within the circle of silence is expecting us expecting us to go through uh ojos the scar yeah and the secret passage from there from yeah Stone so uh, i guess at this point because we're close probably close enough where we have to make that decision uh i'm just gonna kind of call over and i'm like all right did we finalize our decision on that if we bypass the circle we'll put a lot at risk but it'll be faster most likely but we also don't know what's going on in Cold Stone Flow. 
I don't think I'm here in this conversation. <clears throat> I have not joined this conversation. Everyone's just rocking back and forth <laughs> below deck. <laughs> I have faith whatever you decide to do, because the Green Matron guides all of us. Suddenly, as you are getting closer, and now begin to go over the top of this mountain, beneath you, you begin to see piled stones. Hmm. You had seen elements of this originally uh, somewhere previously. These stones stacked to seem almost humanoid in shape. <coughs> Man, the fisherman's friends are not friendly today. <coughs> no. Um, you see these stones stacked almost humanoid-like in shape, and as they pass, you remember these are uh, Aarakocra way signs. And then suddenly, in the middle of a ruined building, well, there are buildings that are intact here. You can see stacked up, there are big stones, some like 10 feet across, stacked on top of each other and then bound seemingly very precariously. There are little stone huts on some of these, but you don't smell any fire. There is no signs of life here at this time. But in the ruins of a ground-based building, you see a very humanoid looking shape, almost exactly matching the one that you were shown uh, when you were in the Courtyard of Glory. Okay. Um, well, if we can see them, they most likely can see us. I guess we should probably land. This is prob- yeah. The, yeah. We don't want to upset. We should at the very least check in, even if we don't take advantage of it. Yeah. Alright, take us down. <clears throat> is there a place nearby where I could safely land, or is it really like yeah, I would say, so you see as you're kind of going over, you take a big long swoop and you take a circle over this. It's a village that, I know this one little fly is just going yeah. everywhere. It's, it's so really annoying. creating a lot of chaos. <laughs> and as you do, there's maybe like a, like a 400 foot square area that is covered by these buildings. Some are ruined, some are still intact. But along the edge of one, actually very close to this kind of way sign that you see, uh, the buildings sort of end, these pillars sort of end, and there is just like little rocks here and there, and you can land pretty safely. Alright. Still um, little stone statues like scattered about in the field. Alright, before we land, can someone go check on Brenna, please? Fine. <laughs> I'm gonna go. <laughs> sure. Hey, hey, Brenna, we're about to land. You, you good? Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, don't, don't come down. <laughs> Brenna, I'm um. Naked? No, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, what? No, no. Um, I'll be right there. <laughs> okay. Uh, don't touch any of my meat. I want to save those steaks for a celebration. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go back no upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so I think at this point, Brenna is, like, very worse for the wear from, yeah. of, like, eight hours of, like, yeah. basically Chinese water torture. Yeah. Um, so she goes, She'll okay, in a minute. fine, just <laughs> just stop. What, what do you want? And don't say to eat Aka. Brenna, we want the same thing. We are hungry, but for more than food. We'll work with you, Brenna. But you need to work with us. What do you want? You know what we want. <laughs> what we need is meat, Brenna. All right, look. I will promise to feed you at every opportunity that does not involve killing my friends or innocent people. Do we have a deal? Can I get a plum? Or, sorry, make a persuasion check. <clears throat> God damn, six. What is innocent, Brenna? Are you innocent? <laughs> is Akka innocent? Mostly. <laughs> um... God, philosophical questions. I'm mostly just trying to see if there's some way that I can re-roll. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what are you saying? Um, I go, hey, fuck. look, these, these people, whether they're innocent or not, doesn't matter. They're a means to an end. Mm -hmm. And you need me to get you to the soul jar, right? So if we can agree to leave them alone and feed you on my terms, then, you know. And then Brian takes a deep breath and she goes, I'll bring you to the soul jar and I'll free you or whatever. <laughs> Are you lying about that? Um, I think 
Brenna's hoping that she'll be stopped. Like she, but I don't think it's like an outright lie. Make a persuasion check and make it at advantage. <clears throat> um, five. Damn. I got a natural <laughs> one and a four. <laughs> a certain carnivorous glee. Brenna, you know they are just means to an end. Food waiting. We'll use them until we eat them, Brenna. Until they're no longer useful, means to an end. But remember, we are always hungry, Brenna. And Arka is a snack. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Just, just give me some peace now, okay? Fine. Great, thanks. And she <laughs> goes goes up top and does her best to avoid Akka and Shay because she doesn't want to like upset the delicate balance she's established now. <laughs> okay. How are we landed now? Um. Or so yeah, I would say if you want to, no problem at this point. Once I see that Brenna comes up, I will land. <laughs> okay. All right. So. We're about to meet the contact within the circle of silence. We should choose our words carefully. Well, we need to make a decision on exactly what we're doing. Are we going through a coal storm flow or not? We have, it would be, we know where the Antarctic is up here, correct? We know some entrances given our means of getting through to get to the cold forge, but Again, I didn't sign the contract, so I would not feel good about going through the territory that we could potentially try to go through. They would probably be fine. I would not be. Also, probably none of you, unless you, you know, sign a terrible, terrible contract on the back of a human slave pulled from some horrible other realm. So, Brenna goes, ha, who would agree to something really terrible just yeah. to get what they need in that moment? That's crazy. Hunter's <laughs> gonna, like, put a hand on Brenna's <laughs> shoulder and try to, like, to comfort her as <laughs> she can. Um, okay. So, the entrance that you know of are all controlled by this gray lady? Is that what you're getting at? The one, uh, would I know any others? I'm trying to think, like, Actually, there is an entrance to the Underdark from Kol Taram. Yes, you've been to the Undercity, been, and that is technically yes. in the Upper Dark. Right, and we also know that that's where the Dungannon agent presumably left to go Correct. into the Underdark from somewhere outside Correct. but close to the city. You would imagine so. Right. You but also know. know um, <clears throat> uh, I would say that's probably what you know in terms of like entrances, but there right. are entrances to the Underdark all right. over. Right. It's really a matter of getting to the right place in the under. Right, because it's like a maze when you get down there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, I think our safest option is going directly through. Um, they can show us the way, and I mean, I don't know the Underdark very well. Uh, are we not yet a at a point where Brenna would know her way around? <clears throat> you are on the peak of one of the tallest mountains. Right. So probably as far away from <laughs> right. like your comfortable position as you could be. Mm -hmm. So so Brenna is not going to be <clears throat> useful at all in terms of navigation for a, a while. Like there's no option for like Brenna to do the navigating instead of this contact. Well, how would you like to try? I mean, you would need to No, I'm just I'm just making sure I understand like yeah, <laughs> I don't want to try. <laughs> the guy's so, name. Yes. What was his what? Carbon Cold Right. Carbon Cold <laughs> is our contact with the, the circle of silence. Yeah. So I, I mean, putting it out there as well, have never been to Stoneflow as most people haven't, would be pretty interested in seeing the technological marvels that are presumably stored in there. Um, but that's, you know, just tangential to the bigger issues. Um, and another reason why I would vote that we go through 
and follow this guide. Because again, I, if they can just lead us right to where we need to go, that's going to be the quickest route. Even if we could find a better place, we'd spend so much time searching for it. True. I also imagine that... And don't want to upset the circle of silence, but I don't know. That's another tangential to the tangential of this. <coughs> I imagine that cool the stuff um, in there. whole stone floor we're not going to be seeing. We're probably not going to be walking through the streets. We're probably going to be skulking. You find cool stuff when you skulk. Uh, Eleanor, for what it's worth, also, um, you're not sweating by any means, mm-hmm. but here it's probably about 50 degrees. So, <clears throat> getting to the point where cold weather here probably not needed, mm-hmm. but um, it is brisk up here still. Okay. I'll probably just open the jacket. Okay. <laughs> um, knowing what I know about the elemental deluge mm-hmm. that is somewhat nearby, um, could the heat be a result of being within this sort of fault line of the planes intersecting? You remember from the elemental deluge that beneath coal stone flow, there is a place called the, uh, I believe it's called the, hmm, right in front of the microphone too. Uh, the, it, I think it's called the Hellfire Annex. <laughs> yes. This is a, a rent in this plane that leads to the plane of steam. Right. Thinking about, um, yeah, absolutely. So it's probably all steam-powered stuff, and this is probably why the the hot vents of air that have been uh, mm-hmm. causing our turbulence. Perhaps. Yeah. And as you look around in this really misty place, you do see it kind of swirls and moves in places. Mm-hmm. You feel warm breezes every now and then. Yeah, that would add up. Mm-hmm. Make a perception check. <clears throat> kind of use your special magical eyes to look around for some kind of uh, vent. Uh, 16. Okay. You look around, and from the distance uh, of that kind of waystone thing, as you look, you see a particular swirl of mist, a little bit more abrupt than the rest of them. And then suddenly, you hear this loud whistle. Mm -hmm. Stepping from within this steam, you can see still kind of like giving you a weird look not a hundred percent certain on you mm-hmm. that you can see arms wrapped around he's bare chested um wearing like these what look like um you've seen crafting gear before like like pants for a crafter um but completely bare chested bald you can see uh black hair but he approaches and just goes hey changes all of you you must be Carbon Cold Harsh. Ah, that's me, boys. Come on. He kind of gestures over, begins to kind of turn back to where he was. All right. Um, Choice made. Yep. He turns around. <clears throat> Listen, it's fucking cold. I need to go. Let's go. I'm following. I'm just floating down. put a shirt on sure. then. <laughs> he turns and looks at you. If I put my clothes on, they'd know I'd gone somewhere, wouldn't they? I I'm guess. sneak all of you in. If you go yes. in, then it's going to be kind of hard for all of you. I make my money by getting people where they need to go, so come on, let's go. All right, all right, jeez. He turns, shivering. Assuming that this is a dwarf. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so he turns, you all follow? Yes. You get off the ship. I do, I do like dwarves, <clears throat> as a rule. <laughs> also, the only humanoids like allowed in stone flow are dwarves. Gotcha. Most of the time. Yeah. So, he says, um... So all of you are going to be cutting across Cold Stone Flow. You don't need to go in. We're going to get you by. Oh, great. That's great. N- nice and speedy. Turns and says, you want to take a scenic route? <laughs> no, 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 no. I can get you. <laughs> Costs a little something extra, though, doesn't it, boys? He turns. What are we talking about here? He's like shivering, but still seems a little eager. So you want to get across the seep? Garvin can get you across the seep. Well, the seep, that's where we're trying to go, right? Or trying to go through. I'm going to get you by the seep. I like that Akka is always firmly against any detour unless it's to see something cool. Yeah, then it's like, oh, we got, we got some time. It's literally technology beyond the rest of the world's comprehension. Is this a service that you offer outside its extenuating circumstances? He turns and says, Depends what you mean by the stenuating circumstances. Well, we're in a bit of a unique spot being lived through at the moment. Is this something that if we know the contact, we can buy in at any time? 
You want to work for the circle. They told me you'd be coming, and so I'm helping. Mm. I'm here. They got me here. Mm-hmm. So, so if you need something, just tell me. You're from Cold Stone Flow? From the sea, yeah. How how interesting is the <laughs> technology? Oh, is it all right. Alice, Alice, we're, 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 we are on a time table. <laughs> he leans <laughs> into you, and he goes, wait, wait, wait just a minute, Jess. Business has had to... Um, I can't quite hear without the proper lubrication of my ears. I, you know what I mean. Oof. I do know what he means. And if I didn't just get a blessing of wealth, I wouldn't, but I will. Just give him a whole package. Just be like, All right. I understand what you mean. And like, give him a pat, but like, right have the, the coins here so that you're <laughs> like, kind of, you know. Yeah, you absolutely. Like, Thanks. Bro. You take your hand away. You feel like you see his hands move, but the coins aren't there. Yeah. He's pretty slick. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> but he turns and says, "Well, what do you want to know about the tone flow?" Garbage to tell you. Um. What don't I want to know? Uh. Who? I guess I. What? The Circle of Silence has just asked you to help. Haven't given you many details, I assume. I help the circle of silence here and there, get people where they need to go. Okay. They keep a safe house, and I can get you there. Steel spun uh, chambers. Oh. Uh, but I don't work with the circle. Okay. I'm a patrolman. Oh, okay. So you would probably also know where any interesting artifacts, uh, technological marvels might exist and be available for purchase or trade. A man like me knows many things. It seems like that. What are you looking for? <sighs> what am I looking for? So many things. One of the things about Stone Flow is we believe magic is kind of limited. Mm. You can't do much with it. Mm. But steam. Mm. We can do some things. You ever used a gun? Ooh. Ooh, no. Oh. But I. Oh no. Oh god, Aka with a gun. No. <laughs> you want to fire one? <laughs> kind of. What? Aka. How do I do that? Just a moment. Um, it might take another platinum to jiggle the lock. Oh, okay. Well. Once I see this uh, gun, I think... Oh, Lord. <laughs> make a, make a, a persuasion check. <clears throat> Ooh. Um, I don't know if I'm particularly persuasive. Um, okay. 18? You got me in a good mood today. Good. Let me see what I have. Just a moment. I can <laughs> say that. He walks over. <laughs> you can see he goes to this little, um, uh, what looks like a humanoid sort of figure. And you see he traces his hand in a peculiar way. Mm. It opens. Mm -hmm. And he steps down. He turns. You can barely see him through the mist, even at like 30 feet. But he says, don't wait too long. Don't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. That's a joke. Turns. Disappears. (laughs) Shuts. Stole your platinum. (laughs) Just kind of look over. No, I didn't give it to him yet. Like, so we're going to go through the seep. Mm Mm-hmm. And then, um... How, we seen, what are, how many guns have we seen in our lives? <laughs> Eleanor, you maybe have seen one. Mm-hmm. They're incredibly exotic. Mm-hmm. The only place that they're currently produced in the world mm-hmm. is Cold Stone Flow. They do have, in places, you are aware of a place called Captain's Keep. Mm-hmm. Um, this is basically a series of ships and docks that have been lashed together, and over time... <clears throat> Has essentially created like a flotilla um, that is like a pirate haven out um, a little ways east, actually about a day east of this. Mm-hmm. Um, you know that Stoneflow has a weapons dealership there where they sell like old, outdated technology. Mm-hmm. To say years ahead would mean that other people would have to be able to imagine how to create this. Mm. There are things that are well beyond any other technology that has been seen. This is any weapon that you would have seen that is gun adjacent would have been like decades and decades and decades out of date and still so cool. Yeah. Okay. So like ancient blunderbuss versus potential like Glock is what we're talking about here. 
Maybe something like that. Something like that. Okay. I I don't know. <laughs> to kill the fly. He's trying so. really yes, hard. So close. Oh, that's right here. Oh. All right. This is. This is... <laughs> no, it's right here. Oh my god, guys. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh no. All right. Don't worry about it. No, we're fine. We're fine. <laughs> Blinders on. Kids. So you see why Aka's <laughs> interested in this technology. I don't know if any of us can afford a gun. Where there's a How gun. Much? I just want to see it. I have a curiosity, and I don't do these things. I want just to hear the stone open up. All right, boys, I got something for you. You see, hauling out this big leather sack, um, this dwarf. You see he slipped on just like a basic shirt, but still looks pretty chilly. Um, he drags it over to you across the grass and sits it down. All right, I've got three things for you, and I can maybe part with one of them. Mm. <laughs> you gonna give me one? Uh, I don't think give, give. is the no right such thing as give. Well, exchange, of course. <laughs> of course. Wink. <laughs> Opens the bag and reaches in. <laughs> what he produces is um, this sort of tube of metal. You know what guns look like. However, this is something very different than anything you've seen. First of all, it's small. Mm. Only about the length of your forearm. Mm. Um, and there is no one single flared sort of end to this. Mm. Looking into it, you can actually see through this dark hole, there is like rifling that has been done along this barrel. And as you look along it, there is these strange kind of glyphs that pop up off the top, you would imagine can activate in some kind of an arcane way. Um, and he says, now, starting off with the best thing of all, you lead strong, you know what I mean? Mm. Now, this weapon, still a prototype, can't get it even in stone flow. Somebody like Carbon can get it. Mm. How much platinum you got? <gasps> How I much do you check need? Guy. Make an insight check. How much do you oh, need? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's only 12. Seems legit. Shit. Well, something like this. Dangerous to get. The sound circle would pay a pretty penny for it, I bet. 100 platinum. Does it look really cool and <laughs> like something I could integrate into my arm. Make an arcana check. <laughs> arm gun. the kind of shit that I'm... Arm gun. I am on board with arm gun, generally. Oh, full that gadget. was a bad roll, but that's a an 18. Flash <laughs> genius! Okay. Into 23. Arm, still you peer down. <laughs> and he kind of holds it away for a little bit and goes, they gotta pay for it to hold. But I'll let you look. <laughs> holds it up like this. You take a look and at first it's kind of hard to really make out. Mm -hmm. um, you mistook this for sort of like an um, arcane glyph and it's not. As you look at it, you haven't really seen anything too similar to this before, uh, but some element of maybe phosphorus or, or something that you're not familiar with, and that already strikes your interest, mm -hmm. seems to create this sort of glowing point. And looking at it, you could probably very easily and accurately cite this weapon. Mm. Um, you'd imagine quite a long range. Um, and he speaks up and says, fires different things too. Ooh. Mm. Uh, you know, the trip up has been a bit, um, is there a way that we could establish good relations at some sort of discount? Ooh. A good relation at a discount ain't much of a good relationship, is it? Why don't you show us what else you have in case we want to bulk purchase something? Ah, bulk oh, bargain you. buyer! I got gotcha. you. Takes it, stows it right in the bag, reaches in. Something a little older. Packs a punch, though. But you gotta be careful. Might knock you over. The largest amount of mass from this bag is removed. And for him, he kind of struggles to get it out. But hefting this up, you see what is maybe like a, f uh, probably about eight inches wide is the diameter. It's this long, almost tube of what looks like copper. Ooh. You can see there are rivets that have been wrapped around it to reinforce it in several areas that seem like important functional joints. And along the top, there's an area uh, roughly this size. Actually, you could probably drop something the size of this into. Mm -hmm. This takes a bit of time to get set up. You need to have it ready to go. The beginning of a battle. You know what I mean, boys? But once you do, it's a veritable fireball that emerges. 
like the spell fight. <laughs> I don't really do magic. Well, I'm just trying to, because I, I do. And so I'm just trying to, you know, get some sort of comparison to the power of these <laughs> technological marvels. I'll tell you what, Carbon's a businessman. Have you got something cool? <laughs> I mean, I'm not really into antiques, but it's nice. <laughs> uh, do I have anything cool that you would like? You have so much stuff, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know if I have anything cool, though. I, I mean, anything cooler than the arm. If the arm doesn't impress him. Yeah, then. right? Yeah. And, like, a... The armor... No, that's just regular old fucking black old Yeah, no, I don't know. Really you seem a little tight with the coin, but if you could pay a bit, maybe we could have you fire it and see it for yourself. How much for the second one? Well, the second one, and I'll warn you, because I'm friendly like that. You seem very friendly. It does have a preponderance to blow up. He kind oh. of gestures to the places where it's been reinforced. It hurts quite a bit, from the, what I'm told. The prototype doesn't? What? Doesn't uh, have a tendency to blow up? No, it does. And oh. that's sort of the problem and why I'm trying to give it to you for such a discount. A hundred platinum is the discount? No. For this? <laughs> He's on to the platinum. second thing. <laughs> but understand, it can blow up. Hmm. And you're already missing one arm, so... <laughs> Ooh. That is a liability. Um, you want to protect the one you got. Here's the thing. I want to do this deal with you because I like the things that I'm seeing because I've literally <laughs> never seen anything like this in my life. And you may not see it I again. Do, exactly. And I am a, a connoisseur of sorts of um, rare and interesting items. Uh, how about both of them for math a second? <laughs> math finder. He writes a number on a paper. It would be so hard to do in this kind of a setting where you flip some parchment, <laughs> you take out your quill, you dip it in some ink, and you like slowly like paper? write out this like, number. You just let it dry. Just <laughs> feeling her soul leave her body. <laughs> and, as if we somehow switched places. <laughs> Eleanor switched emotional yeah, states. Very much. Yeah. <laughs> 125 platinum for both. Make a, uh, a persuasion check. Come on, big persuasions. <gasps> oh, that was cocked. That was cocked. Okay, We're gonna do okay, okay. You moved it to a one. I know. <laughs> it was on a 19, and then I moved it, and it went to the one. You got too uh, much dice in No, there. that's not good. That's a nine. Damn. You're cheap. That's not gonna work. Flash a genius. You should know better than that. You said there were three? Well, two and a half. He takes this, puts it away. He reaches in and he like partially pulls it out and he says, no. Eh. He pulls it out and you can see it is um, relatively small. This is the smallest of them. And similar to what you said, this is like a blunderbuss style pistol. Mm. Um, you can see the end is almost like a swivel cap that you can open up and you would imagine, and actually as he, as he like gestures, he swivels it open. You can load it with stones, you can load it with nails, you can load it with whatever you want. Works pretty well. In a pinch. The other two need specialty? Yes, they require their own kind of ammunition, but uh, Corbin can get that for you as well. Additional price, of course. Risk, reward. Mm -hmm. Okay. 150 gold, uh, platinum, platinum, for the two, and sufficient ammo for both of them. Because <laughs> you're trying to throw ammo on top of it and still get a discount. Ooh. I mean, <laughs> let's make it more interesting. Let's have a little contest, you and me. Ooh, oh, good. What kind of go. contest? Do you want to fire this gun, right? Kind of. This is how we're going to play this. You pay me 50 platinum right now. No questions asked. And we're each going to take a shot at the statue over there. And gestures behind your ship. There's like one way off in the distance. Whichever one of us gets a better shot, we're going to go with those terms. And if you lose to me, 200 platinum even. Get yourself a deal. Do it, do it. 
I gotta see if I can actually afford that. I honestly thought he was gonna do like some kind of Russian roulette. Um, <laughs> he's yeah. not. He's not like. It's, it's, it's not like a crazy, crazy right? It's not like, a. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can't. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We've got the time. Right? <laughs> 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 Fantastic! Come on, boys! And he kind of pulls up the sack and begins to kind of walk over uh, in the direction of your ship. You can see he casts his eyes up and goes, Really a collector of antiques, all of you. Oh, this is giant stuff. Keeps walking. Brenna is beginning to regret not eating Akka. Yeah. Like, <laughs> not allowing the eating of Akka. While they walk <laughs> off... I want to look at the door okay. and see if she like, can this, just once. recreate just the this hand gesture. Once. Exactly. Just once. You this walk is over, like the fourth time that Akka has It's like done a stone, this. a series of stones that have been piled together, like almost like a person. It looks like a person with her arms <laughs> spread out. And as you look and get closer, etched into the stone, there are very tiny little sigils. Mm. And so not so much a hand motion, but more of like a code. You speak mm. Dwarvish? Yes. Okay. So very uh, simply, yeah. this is just like a series of different uh, sigils yeah, that would be like, kind of representative of letters, and you gather that this is roughly like a passcode that you would need. Mm -hmm. Make an intelligence check if you try to remember what those hand motions might have been up to. Nope, eight. <laughs> <laughs> you go and your brain just blank, mm -hmm. nothing. You're like, I, you, like in your mind, you see his elbows move, but the hands are just like blurs. <laughs> you have no idea what this combination could be. Mm -hmm. But the rest of you, while Eleanor takes a little bit of time to try to figure this out, you all mm -hmm. progress off past the ship and into this open field. Uh, this gentleman sets the sack down. He pulls out this uh, big, almost cannon-like weapon. We're gonna the use first the fun one. The no, first. Oh, the, the second, second one. one. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna use chance of one. exploding. Yes. Okay. Now, again, could be kind of dangerous to use. Corbin's good. I can jump out of the way, but be careful. You look a little stiff. No offense. <laughs> Pulls Please out tell the me spider. they're not aiming anywhere near the ship. His back is to the ship, so they're oh, aiming at almost like, you know, he definitely <laughs> knows what this can do. And he's trying to make a deal with you, not ruin your life. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he takes this out. First or second for you? Now, see how it works, or you feel unlucky? Mm. Can I get like a minute to just look at it? You know, try to get a feel for it before we start. Yeah, it's not going to help him. Go for it. He goes ahead and puts it down. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm going to use Identify on there it. There you go. So uh, what does Identify do for non-magical uh, weapons? Uh, it doesn't say. Okay, so what does Identify do? Uh, you choose one object throughout the casting of the spell. If it is a magic item or some other magic imbued object, you learn its properties and how to use them, whether it requires attunement to use and how many charges it has, if any. You learn whether any spells are affecting the item and what they are. If the item was created by a spell, you learn which spell created it. Um, and then if you touch a creature. For something of this nature, you're surprised to learn there is no magic involved. It was not mm. created through magic, it was created through a process, mm. mechanical process. Mm. And as you look at it, so before all like the dents and the kind of places where it's clearly blown up and been reassembled, the places that are still intact, very smooth, um, they look almost as if they should have come from magic. Mm. Whatever technology produced these, way beyond anything you've seen. Mm. Okay. And this is the second best one. I really want to win this tournament thing. Let's go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to cast Guidance on myself. Okay. Uh, I guess, uh, what, do, what do I shoot? What do I do? So, roll a 20 set of dice. Are you proficient with uh, firearms? Um, it's a proficiency. Yeah, but it's a thing that hasn't existed in Akka's life up until just now. So then you are just rolling dice, adding your dexterity modifier. Okay. I'm going to um, sidle up and use bolstering magic on him. Yay! Here, you get to add a d3 to Yay. attack rolls and ability checks. Does this count as an ability check, or is this an attack roll? It's an attack roll. Okay, so my guidance does nothing, right? Uh, no, it does not do the thing. Okay. Oh, this is bless. <laughs> yeah, you feel great. All right. Big roll here. Uh, okay, that's, uh, 23. A 23. You pull up this weapon. Can I flash of genius that? also gave you a wheel. Ooh, thank oh. you, Talon. 
All right. The, uh, I don't think I can flash of genius attacks. I don't believe you so, can, but yeah. either way, with the Talons, wheel especially. <laughs> there is a moment Talon. as you pull this up where suddenly the wind dies down. The fog around rising up from this warm earth uh, seems to almost stand still. And for a moment, it's as if it's parts and you see perfectly the statue mm-hmm. in front of you. Still, you've never fired this. Um, looking at it, there's no handle or anything. You can see the, this kind of thing that you need to depress. How are you holding it? Well, it's like a tube, right? Yes. Yeah. Probably like, <laughs> they're like, you know, trying to make sure, because like, I imagine that something mechanical like this that's supposed to fire something very far has yeah. a lot of like, force that's sure. about to be applied so i want to like you know yeah. steady myself so you hold it like this with your not, thumb not in my no no no. but you know like this your yeah. thumb sort of like like on the thing where the thing is sure yeah. no problem you hold this the first thing that i need you to know, do keep make, my make, make, make a strike stuff. saving throw try to do this yeah <laughs> make a strike saving throw as you lift it up and you're about to press it you can see he goes oh boy um <laughs> <laughs> oh boy <laughs> uh hang on i'm just i want to make sure because i think i have stuff for this i got my uh i think i have my stuff ogre strength on so that's story. <laughs> helpful <laughs> my fossily stands i think i got something for this all right that's oh, that's, that's uh 22 with a 22 as this ripples and makes this amazingly loud noise that echoes across this space, the cannon that you were holding, which probably meant to be held almost like a missile launcher, given the size of it, right out of your arms. Your arms are not torn off. Nothing hurts. <laughs> flash of genius. Shape is right behind Even with the flash of genius, this is something that is meant to be like held, secured. Like there's like a whole method to this. You just hold it like this and fire it. I kept it like, you know. You are very fortunate that this is what ends up happening. You see, into the ground. There is this echo. In the distance, you see this stone shatter and as the smoke begins to waft away there is just like the charred elements of the base stone left in the ground you see he looks like the gun right by him and turns back to you he goes that was a pretty good shot first time's pretty lucky not bad thank you fuck he goes back picks up the cannon sets it across his lap opens it up and reaches into his bag and he pulls out this it's almost like a canister like a steel canister Loads it up. Mm-hmm. Pay Shuts attention. It. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm watching how he does it, so I don't snap my arm. Make a perception again. check if you're watching this. Yeah. Oof. Oh wait, I'm looking with my special eyes. <laughs> oh yeah. You're oh, oh I got a one and then a twenty. Yeah. Natural twenty. Natural 20. <laughs> with a natural twenty, some element of your identify spell maybe still like sizzling in your magical eyes. <laughs> this piece of ammunition that he loads seems a little different than the thing that was loaded by you. Ooh. You sense some kind of magic to it. Cheated. <laughs> loads it. What's uh, what's uh, going on with that ammo there? Oh, I'm loading it. Hmm? Looks a little different. It's... How would you know? <laughs> As Special I eyes. said, I'm a <laughs> connoisseur of magical and uh, interesting items. You know, I think it just looks different. Particularly the <laughs> magical. Make an intimidation check. I don't have... I'm not an intimidating figure. I don't have advantages. <laughs> Can I cast Lucky on that? You can't cast Lucky. (laughs) Can I transfer my luck? However, he's going to hoist this up onto his shoulder, and he's going to say, it looks different because I'm doing it right. He presses this thing, and you see his whole body about two feet back in the grass. Um, He's going to use Lucky. (laughs) You bastard. Oh, right. You put it into the world. (laughs) <laughs> into the grass. You see, he goes, fuck! God damn it. Aka's like, I don't know. I'll be taking the 150 platform. <sighs> he takes his big bag, almost like sagging with it, and he takes the cannon. I miss you, Betty. Betty. It Hands it over to you. I'll make sure I put it to good use. As you guys are handing this off, Eleanor, Mm -hmm. you examining all of this, your hands moving across. 
You feel the stone part and move, although the statue doesn't seem to shift. And you realize that's because as you look around, it wasn't the statue that moved. Mm. All around this grass, like sod, seems to <clears throat> up, and a 20 by 20 foot section begins to shift and move. You take a few steps back as the earth literally opens beneath you and a massive platform begins to lift. Steam pours out from beneath. All of you hear this from within. And actually, I would say Corbin at this point turns around and goes, fuck, it's not my day. <laughs> Fucking Arkham is mad that I'm seeing his girl. Come on. He turns around. Right, Eleanor, mm -hmm. for you, you see in front of you this massive creature begin to emerge. But because it is 945 mm, and a good place to start or stop. Let me give you a little visual perspective as we leave off for today. Yes. But Aka has a guns now. <laughs> Not your guns. Two guns. Two, Two guns and ammo. Mm. <laughs> Are you Did proficient you with proficient with that? Firearms? No. Yeah. But Great. Yeah. I'm glad that we have those. Can and I we totally have a way to get new ammo. Can I easily. Have a oh yeah. Thanks. Well, I, if it's a tool, I can just get proficient with it. Oh, yeah. We all know that that's how it works. <laughs> Let's get assist in getting that down there. I got this side. <gasps> Eleanor, you can place yourself directly in front of that. Computer. Yeah, I totally will. Listen. Throw up a combat camera here. So, well, see, nice this is great because now Akka is getting to see more of the technological marvels of Stonefall. And Akka, as you finally, and so you're you guys are all directly in that guy. direction. Yeah. They're here. Um, like the ship is probably right on <laughs> the edge of the map. <laughs> no, He's not at all. <laughs> so you guys are a little bit beyond the edge of the map on the other side of the ship. But as you guys cross over, you see this creature emerging. Get check. <sighs> this huge bout of steam bursts out of billows past you, Eleanor. You look up, this massive creature made out of metal shifts and moves. You don't see any kind of magical sin, uh, sigils or anything like that. All you see is a huge crescent-shaped blade uh, that is probably twice the size of you and a massive hammer. The hammer lifts high. And that is what we're going to add for this evening. Nice. So. Um, Probably a friendly robot. Yeah, yeah. It looks really friendly. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is where we're gonna end. I do have this is uh, this is your ally over here with his bear chest. Wow, look at this. Um, and so he is walking back with this group. Originally, if things had gone differently, um, <laughs> there's a different. Well, there's a whole different way that that was gonna go, and he was just gonna get clobbered right off the bat. But oh, so you guys, it worked out. You guys ended yeah. up actually working. I mean, out the well club probably could have just gotten the guns for free. No, because they were underneath his like secret hiding. The gu I will tell you right his now, the hole. guns were not part of this at all, and, and you guys, you know, you, you, I kept you getting so do. lucky on those rolls, and thank you, Talon, for that wheel. It makes up for all the <laughs> woes you throw at me. Yeah, absolutely. So for all of your bad luck, for the first time, you have something that could probably be dope in your arm. Yeah. Um, but this is where we're going to end for tonight. We're going to be back next week, and then after that, we'll be taking a week off, as we are, or as I will be on vacation. Um, but we'll be back next week on Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for session 113 of Adventures in Albra. <laughs> one plus whatever, yeah, 114 of Adventures in Albra. And if you can't wait, on Thursday at 6 p.m., we'll be playing session 18 of Mosaic Team 5, our original Starfinder campaign. But until then, please stay safe. It is crazy out there. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.